in the house. And Tyson Ranch. Tyson, yeah, Tyson Ranch, Ranch baby. as well, yes. And he's, and he's also making Tyson Ranch sauce coming soon. I really don't think that's so, but you know. Tyson Ranch <laughs> sauce is coming. So Whatever. Ranch, have you tasted the Tyson Ranch sauce? No, it's like sauce. Grey Poupon. Grey Poupon. Hot sauce is our Grey Poupon. Black people Grey Poupon. Tabasco? Yeah, Tabasco sauce our Grey Poupon. Hey everybody, welcome okay. to another Eben episode of success. We're gonna talk about that too. Of hot boxing. I'm Evan Britton. I'm Mike Tyson. Mike, we got a great uh, we guest. We got an awesome guest. We got the man, man D Ray Davis in here. What's happening? Yeah, D Ray. I'm the little, little guy in the room for a change. How you doing, man? <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm comfortable, man. I've been seeing great. you in the fucking um hip hop squares and shit. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. I actually um was watching I watched your HBO special and I was like, this is ingenious. Yours. My two favorites are yours and um, John. I want to mess up his last name. I want to fuck it up. Uh, Liguizano. Yeah, he had awesome. His yeah. was yeah. I like I like just the, the the way it was. Like how it's you know you bring your own light to it, your own conversation, and with no interruptions and just the way it was. So he's really talented, brother. Yeah. Hopefully, I drop some shit like that. It's awesome. You could. So, am I right? Are you fifty years old? I'm the hell not. No way. I'm There's not, no man. way. I'm not, man. But I don't know who changed my age. I think it's an ex girlfriend pissed at me. Somebody did. Somebody did. But it, you somebody know, did. I was you don't, like, this is what I tell good. people. Pay attention to everything going on with your your your, your shit, like your media, your, your Wikipedia. Because I don't, I don't pay attention to that stuff. And then yeah. I don't know where I was. <laughs> I was 51. So you saw that too. I, so, so I didn't make that up. Now nah, people's wishing me fucking happy birthday on August fifth, nineteen sixty eight. I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> birthday on August fifth? And my, my, and my gra- no, my birthday is February twenty sixth, but my grandfather's birthday is August fifth. So I thought yeah. maybe well, we ain't got the same name or nothing. I don't know how I got. No, God, brother, that's I got weird. I got about a decade before I get to that. But Good. It's still, okay. Uh, I mean, not, it's, you look decade great. Decade is 10 years, right? I said, right, okay. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I didn't do good in math. I, five <laughs> yeah. years of high school. I ain't really. Yeah. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's what it is. is Hip Hop Squares, Hollywood Squares. What is that thing? What's the name? Uh, Hip Hop Squares, man. Ice Cube just uh, yeah. jumped on board and, and flipped it. to. It, they tried to come out with it a long time ago on um, uh, MTV2. They tried to uh, do Hip Hop Squares, and I, I was one of the squares on that end. But they didn't have the budget to match what the idea was, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got a great idea and the budget don't, you know what I mean? It's like the, mm. it's like the dope boy on the Sometimes corner. Sometimes you gotta come out of your own pocket. <laughs> yeah, the dope boy on the corner. He's like, man, I wish, uh, I, I wanna go get all the keys and all, but the, the time ain't right. So that's what it was. They had they had a product, but didn't have the right resources. But then when Cube came along, VH1 was ready for it. So it's, it's like the old Hollywood Squares back when Robin when you, when you used to told us, Whoopi Goldberg was on there. Just a lot of uh, celebs and people who think they celebs? <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a lot of that going on right now. But uh, there's it's a cool, lot of man. celebs, a lot yeah. of influencers, yeah. Yeah. a lot of people doing God knows what. But it's popping, man. It 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 went off. I was happy to be hosting. I was Hell glad yeah. that I know how to it's read shit. It's a great gig. Because I didn't know I knew how to read that good. And there they were. Start getting <laughs> from that teleprompter. I was like, oh, this is nice. I can. I thank a teacher sometime. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. You um, got to get on there, man. Cool yeah, Mike should there. definitely be. But on I'm sure that. we would have to shoot it over here on the ranch. <laughs> at the ranch. Where are we, Mike? As long as Mike can have where, some um, weed. What do we at? Where else? El Segundo. Well, yeah. boy, well, uh, tip Q-tip left his wallet. Yes, a long time. That's right. It's far, we'll go man. Go back to El Segundo, right? I kind of know. I, I kind of got a feeling why y'all way out here. Tell me. Because the airport right there. And, and Kay, you got a lot of white people here. They want to be close <laughs> to the airport in case Absolutely. something jump off. I seen all them private planes over there. Absolutely. You just get the hell out of here. Got it. It's great for business. Everybody's right here. They get out of here. Right here. Yeah. Easy in, easy out. Um, I ain't gonna lie. Let me get this out of the way. I'm excited, man. Many times I've met you and seen you or whatever. I'm a fan. Um, I don't know how to put it in, in the proper words without sounding like a lame, lame nigga. But I, um, I, I had five Mike Tyson t-shirts and I chose the Wu-Tang because I was like, I'm gonna look super lame. <laughs> If I wear, that's like wearing, being next to somebody in the club and you got their jersey on, like a basketball player, football player. But um, I'm, I'm a real fan, man. I like the way you uh, just marketed everything and it's real hard branding, down to the cartoon, everything. I watch, I'm not making up shit. I watch this shit. I don't have to, Thank I don't you, lie bro. to nobody. I don't it's make awesome. up shit. I'm like, yo, this shit is, it's epic. It's what you want to do. You want to control all bits and pieces of your brand. So I, yeah. always, I just realized in life that, um, 
my thoughts are my reality, you know? And whatever I thought in my mind that I wanted to do, I, 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 I pretty much accomplished it. I see it. Hmm. Looking at it. All right, sorry. On that, that note, though, Exhibit that. came in here. He was wearing a Mike Tyson oh, t-shirt. Did he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. different as Exhibit, X to the Z. Yeah, X to the He's Z, Z awesome. dog. Another funny thing about Ex- Exhibit's story, I was, uh, this is back Did when- you have him on the square? No, nah, Exhibit, man, Exhibit, when he feel like it. You know, he had a little ranch, too. He disappeared. Yeah. Exhibit will disappear. He go buy three Rolls Royces and disappear, drive them separate. <laughs> I think he rolled in in a Lambo or something yeah, like that. Yeah, he's rolling pretty hard. Yeah, he yeah. Do, he's been since Jump Start. I was in a club, and um, I remember I, I just got from Chicago. I had to be like 20 years old, and I was in a club out here. And Exhibit Songs, uh, uh, not, that's when the album came out, 40 Days, 40 Nights. Mm. And he had that record, like, and I, I was a deep hip-hop. I love, I love like, real hip-hop. And he's from, he, he was out here, but his vibe was, like, straight New York mixed with the blender. Yeah. Like he was like, it's about players, pimps, ballers, busters, <laughs> slipping these studs. Uh, and I was like, yeah. I saw the video. He's walking to get fucking milk or something, <laughs> and everything's exploding behind him. And I was like, this is crazy. So I walked past um, him at the club, and I tapped my child's mother. I said, yo, motherfucker, that's Exhibit. And she said, who? I said, the dude I showed you the rap video. That's the motherfucker. <laughs> he first rap I was singing like that. I was like, yo, that's the Exhibit, nigga, the nigga. And she's like, <laughs> Oh, you, you should say something. I was like, nah, I ain't no lame nigga like that. So I walked to the bar and stood next to him for me. I was like, oh, I tried to play it off. I was like, yeah, you, uh, exhibit, yeah. Uh, uh. Like, they played it. I said, I'm going to uh, come to my comedy show on Monday. And he was like, yeah, don't talk about my voice, though. Everybody's crack on my voice. Yeah. But we ended up becoming good friends, man. And through the years, like, oh, um, dope. yeah, like, like, we used to go by the house. He's the first I've never been to a crab boil, although I'm, I'm allergic to shellfish. I still looked at it. I looked at the broil, whatever. Look good. Uh, he taught me how to boil. Well, at the time, the situations around him, had taught, I learned how to boil uh, uh, artichoke. I never done that, and I still do that to this day. This many years later, he. I went to the studio. I, I put. I did like uh, on his mixtape. I um, did like a hook for it. Like bro, because I would write hooks all the time when I worked with different people. I worked with Eric Sermon and all that. So he took like three or four of my hooks, and and I was able to you know get my 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 writer credit up. For, it's just, it was dope, though. Hell man. yeah, dude! Have yeah. you done Stories. a lot? Have you done a lot of music writing? Yeah, a whole lot. For well, mostly for me, but I, um, I've always been involved in music since the beginning. Like, well, where, where, def- did you, where did you start it from? Where did you come from? Come from Chicago, man. Yeah, with, with, yeah. And, how do you and, get? How do you get from Chicago to to the sunny city? Shit, I was. Uh, my <laughs> uncle was a bartender at a comedy club, and. Uh, he the uncle that taught me how to, I, I was uh, dabbling back in the day with, just with cannabis back in the day, dabbling a little bit. And uh, dabbling. I was getting, yeah, I was getting to the point where it was, it was real comfortable for me when I would go see him at a comedy club and he was the bigger guy pr- with the production of that. And uh, I seen a comedian on stage. I'd never seen comedy before in my life. Never, not one time. And I saw a comic on stage and I was like, yo, this that shit we be doing, just roasting each other. I could do this. And my uncle like, man, if you don't get your ass back here, like, you ain't supposed to be in the club right now. He's like, come back here. And then I, told, I talked to the, uh, the host. His name was Damon Williams. And I said, how you get on stage? He said, well, we got Sunday nights. We got open mic night. Mm. And I said, I want to go up. He's like, when? I was like, next Sunday. Oh, no, I said, that was that night. I said, he said, tonight? And he said, nah, they ain't had work, bro. You got You ain't never been on stage. I was like, I want to go up. So I was working at a place called, at the same time, I was working at a place called Ameritech. I don't know if you remember that. I was a 411 operator. Like Davis, city and state, like answering the phone. And <laughs> one of Damon Williams' cousin's wives, as, as, as ghetto as that might sound, worked there. And I said, yo, you know Damon Williams? I said, I asked him if I go on stage. And he was like, no, I got to get the no comment. But basically, they made the call. So I went up that next week. And I had a notebook of jokes and shit. And I tried to try to do them jokes. And people was like, oh, what the fuck? Is this? What, what, man? Get up there. <laughs> like, and it was two people really heckling me. And it was men at large. You remember that group? The two niggas. Yes. The two big. I lived in Cleveland. I know him from Cleveland. Yeah, the two like, niggas. I'm so alone. <laughs> Gerald LeVert, you three. Alone? Did he? Yeah. I didn't know that. But it was, it was, it was the nigga that won. Um, <laughs> The one that won on Apollo, him, and the, he was a new one, and he was with the other guy, but it was him and David or whatever. Can't think of his name. Ge- Geronimo, Jay, I can't think of their names because I haven't that talked to them in a while. I mean, so. Large. It was from Cleveland. I'm in okay. Large. Yeah, yeah so Men at Large, and I started roasting the hell out of them. And they said, you need to be funny. And I said, y'all wish these, like, go back to your book of jokes. And I was like, y'all wish this was a menu, nigga. And, like, and, <laughs> and I did 13 minutes my first time on stage. And I got wow. up, and everybody was looking like, shit, he might have it. So within. How old I, were you? 19. Wow. So within six months, 
I had, uh, I, I got in the Miller Comedy Search. So within six months, I took second place in that shit. I can't. I can't have a little, you know, little Mike Tyson spark, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> if, it, if a comedy not not compared to the boxing and the yeah. back, my mom was you know, the background, and everything. But getting into it, I was right off the bat like that, God, God, God. like I was just, I was just hitting every state and hit and winning. Like how, man, how will you do? Man, how much courage? It yeah, to so much. Fucking... But they told so me so much courage. They were always man. telling me about all the people that because I was still, you no, know, like I was going stage and rap and shit back then, uh-huh. like a bullshit dude. And since I was little, I was doing like trying to jump on karaoke mics and the family reunion. I try to rap something. Or do something to <laughs> throw shows in yeah, the basement. Yeah. Pin, I used to pin up the fucking curtain and do commercials for my mama and shit just to, you know, just to just to practice, do something. I don't know, just to just, yeah, do something. Plus, yeah. you know, and it was a lot of us too. So like kid wise, we just, you had to always out, out entertain a motherfucker. A lot of brothers and sisters. Yeah, man. My my dad got down. Okay. My dad got down. All the kids <laughs> had to be around each other, regardless if it was different moms or not. That's just how Tony was. <laughs> I had to be. You had to be around. I got to be. Tony hey, Davis. You fight like Tony a, Folks. Tony Earl Folks. Earl Anthony Folks. Y'all fighting like a motherfucker. You back your brother. The, yeah. Hell yeah. You don't even know. It's fighting with. Tony. To out entertain people, and then um, it just took off, man. Six months and a year later, I, I had a deal and all that. It was, just, it was it was fast. Wow. It was fast. Before I, then, I was like, no, I'm just gonna act, and that's when you hit the wall. I'd be like, nigga, you better. <laughs> Do something different than just act. I had to, you know, touring is important with with comics. If any young comic watching, stay working, stay working on your craft, and stay uh, working doing it, because that's how, uh, like Kevin Hart, you know, he was yeah. he was out doing the work. Yeah, we was roommates, and he awesome. was out doing the work. He was like, I'm doing these comedy clubs, and I always believe. So easy to get discouraged, then, huh? Doing that shit. You well, mine was I always wanted to own the stuff. Like I yeah. watched the, I watched the dude at the door taking the money. And I watched what he paid the comedians, and I was like, I want to own shit. So within that same year, uh, the year after that, I actually bought a comedy club. It was a comedy oh, club dude. that was going, so I bought into the comedy club. And at it was 20 years old? Riddles at 20, I was going on 21 then, but wow. I had got my deal too. So I took my little Disney money, flipped it to that, <laughs> and I was booking comedians, and I was booking tours. I booked everybody from the Monique's to the, uh, well, not Cedric. Cedric, I had him come through, but I paid... I paid more comics than niggas have ever paid me. I've always wanted to be on that side of the business. Mm. Like, and even Lil, like my, my publicist is here, but her uh, her other client, Lil Rel, who's blowing up everywhere, yeah, yeah. he took over the comedy club for me. Like he would host while I was going to LA doing things. He'd been, he was building and getting stronger, but my whole thing was I do the tour, I pay everybody myself. You ever meet Robin Harris? I did not. I think oh, he, Robin was gone man, by the time I got fuck. back. But I heard he was... He was beautiful. A lot of people said the length of time I spent on stage, and when I'm just riffing, he he had that. Like he had, he just would just talk. The closest thing to it was the Bernie man. That's the that's the oh, closest. Man, he was, both of those guys, man. He was beautiful, Robin Harris. Oh, I love him so much. I always oh. tell people if they had the opportunities that cap, the comics have now, people would be in trouble, man. Like Rob, imagine Robin Harris with a Netflix special. Um, or Bernie, who Bernie never got to drop that soul no, Bernie, special. Bernie, Bernie would have um, lit it up. Man. Robin Harris is just, um, it's so weird. If anybody came to see Robin Harris, they wouldn't, all the celebrities would sit in the back. Nobody would be in the front. Because they just <laughs> rip it, into, you. Just oh, rip them. He, 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 you can't feel it on top, watch him until you have to be there. You got to see him on television. His beauty, his excellence don't come out on television. Whoa, oh, he was God. a master. Everybody was sitting petrified. in the back. Everybody take their outfits. Everybody to the- was <laughs> petrified. When they afraid, all the girls are afraid to go to the bathroom. Just terrified. Just you'll say something. Yes, terrified. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Just terrified. Well, that's so interesting, man. You just you just hit it. It was like a switch went on for you. Yeah, I'll say that. I'll what, say comedically. What were you doing as a kid? I mean, because. Obviously, you didn't start writing that week. Well, you You've been writing. Kid? Nah, you, but I always I, I would. I'm, a, I guess, a fast study with things like that, man. When it when it comes to you hustling, in a gang. Yes. Yeah, you're a street kid. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I was in a gang. <laughs> so, were you always a guy who was sort smart of guy in a gang? No, I was a guy that I'd be like, like even when I was serving, I'd always say with somebody above me who who people would like, so nobody would come like try to rob me. I would always say, yo. It's my uncle shit. Or I was I ain't gonna lie, I was dropping names of people I didn't even talk to. <laughs> I'm like, yo, this big this big herb shit. And they be like, yo, for yeah, real. Chicago reminds me a little bit of LA. Huh. Cause you know, it's it's very few guys you can see as walk. I mean, like one guy, you know, that you can see walking up the street and you can say, Hey, I, I need a crew and he can, oh, really, I'll be back in one minute and he can come bring a hundred guys. And that shit's so simple, it's just so many gangs. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. But it was you know this was, it was the weird part, it was more simplistic because I felt 
I, I, I always, even, even in the gang, like I'm telling you one thing I never did, gang and I, I've never jumped nobody in my entire life. When I heard it was coming up or situations like that, I didn't even take part in it. I ain't never. I love the one on ones. I love the, but I also fucking did different shit. I, was, I also went to the rec center. I was still in the game. My mom was like, knowing I was in the game, but you couldn't. You better go to the fucking rec center. I still did dancing. I still did the ballet mm. shit. I still mm. did grappling all, like, all the time. You know what I mean? Mm. But so I always thought that side of it, I was more on the organizational side. Like, I want, if we gonna squab, we gonna squab. Y'all squab, but I don't like like I, I never all the, the sensitive violence. stuff I, I seen around me, the shootings, the everything. I yeah. couldn't do it. I ain't gonna lie. I, I didn't fake some shootouts. <laughs> I never even fired. I'm gonna tell everybody now. All my everybody that thought I was shoot out and never I was. Hey, all my childhood <laughs> friends I met, we had we met by fighting each other. Yep. Uh, my best friend Larry met at the yeah, park, we ten years old. Yeah, we fight. all wow. friends. Wow. We all best friends. Cause you know what kind of worries you got around you. Though. Yeah. Mm. You don't even you don't know that until it happened because other than that you got dudes around you just just around you know you never know what until something come up but you if you've been into it this person or seen that or met that person even people I didn't fight but somebody was fighting for me I've I've, I've had friends like that like where I'm trying to go somewhere and they like you know what this is and you can just feel that energy for you like when I had no movies out he like this dude gonna be big and you feel like whoa like this dude. Yeah. He can feel your energy like you that. You know what's so yeah. crazy? Like, off the subject for it's a second. Um, you know, like most people, um, most black people, to are minorities and Puerto Ricans and all that stuff. You know, we didn't, uh, even though we had jobs, we didn't have much money, physical money in the 60s. Very few black people had a, a bank account in, like, mm. say, the 50s and stuff. Wow. We're well, just kind of kind of you know scared I mean? of the bank accounts, though. Mm. I remember being raised how my grandfather was, a lot of money, a lot of mattress money. Mm. You yeah. know what I mean? You Billie was, Holiday you know. died with 70, 70 cent in her bank account, but like 300 bucks on her purse, though, or something like that. What? You know what I mean? Yeah, they, they, you were right. They kept How money, much? They kept money on their personal more than the bank. Right, like yeah, yeah. 70 cent in the bank, but like 300 bucks, I think, was on a personal, something like that. More money on a personal than it was in the bank. Jeez. Yeah, you got... I know. There was I, a lot I, of distrust. Yeah, how did, yeah. How did black people even Obviously. get to get bank accounts back then? Do do yeah. white people? Yeah. <laughs> or the, or the white people say, "I'm your bank. Let yeah, me teach you how to that. bank." No, I'm saying they probably did start it like that. Let oh, me teach you how sure. to bank. They, they give me the money. Let me show you how to bank work. Give me two dollars. Now in a month, I'm gonna give you two dollars and two cents. So I was looking at this. <laughs> listen, um, at even. Eminem, I'm sorry, took out, right? It's all good, B. Um, so I'm watching this thing, and it goes like this. It goes um, Cornelius Vanderbilt and Maya Rothschild, both very wealthy, died wealthy. So Vanderbilt left his money to his children. And so right now, they, there's no more millionaires. They, they fucked all the money up. Mm. Ro, um, the Rothschild guy left his money to a banking service. And where it allowed the kids to have a certain amount of money and take a certain amount of money out. And if they don't pay it back in, then they're off the fucking list. They can't take money back no more. Is that Chase? No, this is Rothschild. Oh, and Chase is Rockefellers. Yes, Sears yeah. and Chase is Rockefellers. Yeah. So I was saying... Um, some big bank talk. I don't know none of this shit they saying right now. I'm sitting there like, I, I, like, I go to Chase in Bank of America. I don't know who own what, though. Well, what I'm saying, Vanderbilt yeah. Get, yeah. pretty much gave his money to his children. He gave his money to a banking system, handed the money out. You know what So I mean? interesting. And the kids didn't live up to that system. They were off the system. They can't, can't get involved. So with they them. still have money, though. Huh? They still got bread. Then. They still got money. The Rothschilds. I, so. I think they cut them really up. Boom. Because they have nothing else to bring to the... Because they have to bring something to the system. They're not bringing something to the system. They're not bringing back the money to the system. They don't, they don't pay it back, then they're taking from the system. And not just one person is bigger than the whole fucking system. Somebody have to be lost in the family. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I could set up a system like that with my daughter, but now the way I understand that system though. It's just working off of no feeling. This is uh, yeah. objective. It's very successful. It will work. Yeah. If it's objective. Yeah. You no, know? that makes sense. So I give it to my kids. I have my feelings. Oh no, I better give it to my kids. I love them so much. I want them to be happy like I was happy. And you know, I really pampered them all day. Like they don't know how to fight and be competitive for this money, so they lose it all. Pretty much. You, you don't know? have a thought process like that. I had a conversation with my daughter all the time. I'm like, I paid off. I just paid off her whole like uh, uh, tuition for the first semester. She went down to Grambling just last week. I just paid it off. And I got a text. Thanks for paying my tuition. I'm like, nigga. <laughs> oh, listen, I don't want to talk to you about gratitude. This is, all right, okay. <laughs> listen, some kids. All right, all right. They but I'm saying, in that same. don't know it. Mr. Tyson, don't I'm saying, in that, same, in that same light of what you're saying, though, when you're saying you want to give them something, 
when you don't have, you're like, I didn't, I didn't have, and you know how it felt, kind of. And you, some, some feelings you don't want them to have. Like, down to your daughter being heartbroken. So, or, but we, we, we play both sides. Like, on one, on one note, I blew, I go take 20, 20, 30 grand. I didn't put that on 12 before at the casino. You know what I'm saying? And then I have an auntie that need a car. And I'm like, but in my mind, I just did what was right with my money because I took the gamble because I'm the person that got maybe, it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So maybe I need, if I set that system up for myself, if I don't bring something to the table, I take it from me. I don't know. Huh? Maybe I ain't making no sense. Yeah. Maybe no, y'all. No, no, that's accountability. Maybe that's self accountability, right? Maybe there. I'm um, um, taking in some of what y'all spoke. <laughs> but you got to yeah. learn these things. Yeah, the you don't be just like, fucking yeah. know it. I mean, like, do you know gratitude? Do I know gratitude? Do you, now you do, but what do you just know it innately? It's not intuitive. No, no. Like sometimes I may see somebody that I love or care about. Someone's opening the door for them and they just walk through the door and I have to say, hey, nigga, say thank yeah, you. Yeah, I know. Yes. I hate that. I you hate that I mean? shit. Yeah. But you got to like. deep on that. I'm happy on that too. I shouldn't have said nigga out in public in front of all these white people like that. But the fact is, it's just very important to me for my mother and my father. It's very yeah. important. Yes, ma'am. No, sir. Yeah. It was very yeah. important. We were very poor, Agreed. but that was very important. All day. Agreed. All day. Bump it. Thousand hey, percent. I said, if you want to understand. Over, you can get smacked and beat yeah. over that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I said, bro. if you want to understand, want to see how I feel of, of not, of, it's a world of non gratitude, go to the club and don't have a drink at all and just stand there. And wow. see how many people bump into you. And ha yeah. count how many people say, excuse me, drunk or not. Because it's a reflex. Because me, drunk or not, I'm always, excuse me. I can, Absolutely. I say, excuse me, when I'm alone. If I fart by myself in the house, I say, excuse me. <laughs> in case God listening. <laughs> That's just how I am. I'm like, excuse me. Like, pardon me or anything. You know, it's just... And that translates to the other stuff you're talking about. But I and I never understood that either. But I did it because I would get my ass beat. So I just always did it. But always people liked me for being that way. Even people who were considered not nice people just liked me for being that. They were able to be that way. You know. And I realized in life how it really I took me a long way in life. And then I realized the reason why my mother and father was like that because the system that they lived in humbled them. Mm -hmm. And so I guess in return they had to humble me mm -hmm. innately. But that's yeah. to prevent me from what she experienced or what her father, my father experienced. That's that's still don't though, because then when you when you're a polite person like that, or to the point where we know we're being polite, then when you step outside of that, you know that you're in the right. You know when you're in the right. Like you said, hey, excuse me. I, look, brother, I tried to tell you, excuse me, four times. Exactly. Now you know that. I you know, know when we right. now. So now we, what, so whatever I'm about to do to you, you had it coming. <laughs> No, <laughs> you know, I don't know if you know the comedian Scrancho. Do you know Scrancho? I know crazy. He's a wild yo, crazy. Yo, this nigga right? told, he told me one time, he told me one time, he said, he said, I used to feel bad about beating people up. He said, now, he said, D, because he's old, he's like, I'm old. He said, when I hit people now, I feel like I'm helping God because I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm knocking a demon out of them. Yeah, he said there's a demon. It's in a you. good way to look he at it because he's a real nice guy. He said when he so when he come do something, he said there was a demon in him. But he also the guy who said, by the way, I don't want. He also said this that was in Genesis. He, he don't even know remember saying shit like this. He said, I love the Lord, but the devil has got some bitches. <laughs> I was like, wow. So I balanced and and trying to listen to him, but still hearing that at the same time. But he said. He knocked the demon out of people, man. The Lord got bitches too. Yeah. <laughs> he, you know, he got in there all he brought them here. We used to true, true. we define him as that. He don't call him that, but that's what we define him, but he got him here for us. Yeah, okay, guy got something too. It's yeah. just hard. It's, hard. it's just at church sometimes it's hard to yeah. talk him right out of the out of the church to go straight to the crib, you know. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Oh my god. God invented that word, it's in our mind. <laughs> We can never stop. Even when we say it in, in closed doors, he knows we say it. He's all seen. He's all hearing. He knows everything about us. Mm -hmm. When we jerk off, whatever we do in private that we don't want nobody to know, he sees us. He sees it. He knows. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he said he sees us. He, he, wow. He knows. Hey, man, when you get up to heaven, God's looking. Hey, brother. You wipe your hands. <laughs> he Beat it a lot. Wipe, wipe your hands on that cloud over there. That cloud. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what was it? That should be think? part of heaven, though. You can't do if you can't do that in heaven. You do it. I mean, I, that's I just, just think it's, it's just all fair. there. It's no, all there. I'm, so, I'm not being blasphemous. I'm saying I just think, I, like you said, God knows. God grows. I think back in the days, the things knows, he was mad God about. Grows. I don't think he get as mad now. But listen, if you really, if we really believe in God, you know, um, 
Man put so much guilt in us, and we have guilt in our country. Oh, I shouldn't have did that five yeah. years ago. Oh my God, God's gonna get me. And and with God, there's no good or bad. There's no time, no space. Uh -huh. There's no judgment. Your love. Mm. How can I expect something that I just created out of dust to be able to fucking resist temptation? It's his mind. It's, you know, it's his. He's testing you. This is all a test, and we're all gonna fail, but we're gonna learn from all our failures and become better human beings, the creatures, the aliens, whatever the fuck we are. I like aliens. I'll be that. I Probably. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> to somebody. Yeah. To people Definitely. in another... Dimension? Yeah, dimension. I, we're aliens, so that's fair. Yeah. We're all one. Aliens, dirt, bugs, ants, creatures. Trees. Everything. Stars. Rocks. We're all one. We're all everything. It's all one thing. Um, Before we go much deeper mm -hmm. what was it do you think about the way you thought about what you wanted to do with your life that gave you that idea of I want to control and own the shit that I'm doing and because I mean not many young kids you're you're just trying to like figure it out at that point yeah my and and I was just into my ego I didn't want to own shit and I just wanted to be it for that moment so you know you want to possess that putting shit? it and into my head you know you just get a deal you're fucking on fire and the comedy touring you know you're fucking I, I can't even explain because sometimes like a lot of trouble if you're doing all that shit it what no I can't lie it, 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 shit. It, that seems like a lot of trouble yeah doing it's like fuck touring and stage and I want to and, and it feels like it until I'm until I'm moving and I'm, I'm getting it I want it to be before I even knew what an Al Heyman was before I even knew what a I just I, I, I always seen the other the other money you know mm. what I'm saying when I was playing Monopoly I want to be the banker mm. I was like, what's the rules? Like, who made these rules up? I was, I, I would, I would turn cereal boxes when I was little. My, my mom would buy the bullshit cereal box. But I, would, I would turn everything in my room into a bank, even if I couldn't put nothing in it. Huh. I'm like, this is gonna be a issues? good bank. Come on. Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah, I do. When I got here, they said I had a lot. Like my agents, like I say, I want every. You know, you know, Chris Smith, man. <laughs> Chris, uh -oh. Chris, <laughs> Chris, is a psycho. That's Chris a make. Man. I make Chris. Yeah, I make Chris give me every bit of every dime before I put. And I, I, I put out. And, and, and ask Chris about my expenses, man. I pay like a comedy club will tell me to this day that they spend five thousand on promotions. I don't give a fuck about that. I still take another five thousand of my dollars because I want my promotion to sound like what I wanted to say. I don't know what you're saying about me and yours. I could hear it and get approval, but you still can't make it sound the way I want. You can't sell me better than I can sell me. There's nobody could do that. So I wanted to be in charge of everything so do I do. You do a lot of promotions. You get behind these mics a lot. You do a lot of promotion going to radio shows. Yeah, and tell, yeah. and tell comics how to promote themselves, too. I don't keep, I'm not secretive with it. So I, I try dude, to. Dude, you got to have your own podcast. Yeah, what the fuck are you doing? I know, man. That's it. This, I, love the, I love it's the fucking, setup. I love the setup, but time is time is a lot of things, yeah. and I don't even know what the hell. In the age of modern technology, nigga, you, you're fucking in the Stone Ages. You got to come back. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> you know, we don't listen. I said radio station. We don't even go to radio stations no more. You go yeah. to the fucking shit and know more people know what you're doing than a radio station. You're right. I'm taking that advice, man. I'm not going to not take it from two big motherfuckers. I'm not going to not do it and get in <laughs> no, trouble next time. because I don't know anything and I know this shit. It's, you have to have this shit. Yeah, you but once future, you, but, but when you have likes and fucking all these numbers of people who like you and then your fucking numbers and shit, you gotta have all that shit. And all that you shit. ain't shit if you don't got subscribers or whatever. <laughs> oh, you got no, you, no, you're right. It's like not having, I was watching a show the other day. It's like and not having a fucking passport. It was saying that the news was gonna be like that soon. Like how the news is coming down is gonna start being via. The, the, on the your chick. phone. Yeah. If you think about it, like, yeah. like, because Kim Kardashian got all them followers. Imagine she started her own news channel no when she does it. People gonna go to her for the news no rather shit. than go to CNN because they don't. They ain't got CNN ain't got yeah. as many followers as no, no. She do, so she can come and say whatever she wants. Yeah. Exactly. All the news I get now is through either Instagram. Yeah. Or or Twitter. Yeah. Twitter. What's it's the what, fucking came, weird? Everything. I don't watch the news on. What's TV? trending? What happened yeah. first? Because you know it's real. Because a lot of people are right there. Yeah. Eyewitnesses now yeah. record it and, and send it up right at that moment. It's a so. new fucking era, man. I hear you, man. I'm I'm on it, but gotta remember, I'm still, I'm still old school. Like with the, I still pass out flyers for my shows. Dope, man. I do. I, I still, I still dope. put a certain amount of money in now. I still look. If, if there's a local newspaper, we do interviews every now and then because it might be some old motherfucker like shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna go check out this Dale Ray Davis. You just, just never know. Hell yeah, what would you think be the grandest way to promote yourself? Hmm. End all, be all. Uh, 
holograms coming out the phone. Yeah, Ooh, that'd yeah, be dope. Love, hologram coming out the phone is it's crazy. That you big... click on something, it just come out and shit like <laughs> no, it's just, it's just your, come to my your, show. Your, your phone and then your one of your um, fucking promotions just come out. Boom. Yeah, all that. Yeah, right? yeah. That's gonna be crazy. But I'm hey, sure it's coming. It's coming. Uh, three, it's, it's already. It's probably already here. Yeah, it's already here. I was on a hologram not so long, so long ago. My friend did the hologram with me. I was chilling out on the chair. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> did they do a hologram of you, Mike? No, I was, on, I was in the hologram. You were in it. You yeah. see it. Yeah. I could sit down and touch people. I couldn't touch them, but it seems like I can touch that's them. That's dope as hell. Like, that's, hey, if you want to get to the bread, like to do one show one night the same way they do streaming, like they did. Wait, like the, the, the what they just do with the Miley Cyrus on Black Mirror? Where they oh, had yeah. her, like she was a gigantic hologram. and they, Yeah. Like, but to have that going on where you perform your show and it's actually something people go to pay to see. Yeah, yeah. A worldwide show. show but, but, yeah, yeah it's crazy. crazy. Well, you mentioned Kevin Hart earlier and he fucking busted his ass at every show. Wasn't it that at every show he had like an email list sign mm -hmm. up? Yeah, and but we so, learned a, we learned a lot from Jamie Foxx. Like Jamie, Jamie Foxx did that as first, well. Yeah, so I would and, and I was doing it, but mine was for promotions, like for not promoting me. I was trying to make all the friends. Jamie Smart was smart and yeah. shit. Yeah, hustle this asshole. Jamie, probably just if you're looking up to people, like I have my list. Jamie's top ten, um, as far as like hustling and getting stuff but done. Jamie's the man. Yeah, Jamie, Sam Jackson, number one. Oh, I love that. Number one. And I've, I've only met him once. and It was quick in passing, but just his work ethics. Yeah. You know, dropping so many mixtapes. That's what he did. You see him in all the old movies or whatever. You see you see him go from balding in one movie to a and full that's, afro. That's getting people to know you're putting out all those tapes. Yeah. Looking familiar yeah. with you, right? Yeah. That's why I do all the movies. I that's do. How, um, yeah. That's pretty much the 90s and stuff, right? They're doing this stuff. And like, check out what Eddie Murphy had to do or Richard Pryor. You know what they had to do? Hmm. You see an audience, right? Yeah. It's brand new audience. They never heard of him or nothing. And they go, and they go like this, go on stage. Yeah. Imagine that. They ain't never heard you or nothing yet. And then you have to make these people laugh. And yeah. they did. They that did. was talent, man. That was talent. Yeah. Because you made, and that's the people at home, they're making their family laugh. And they be like, you funny enough. That's when encouragement came from just the crib. They'd yeah. be like, go up there and knock it out. That's crazy, yeah. right? How, now I think the way that so people do amazing. it now, how crazy it is. It's yeah. amazing. Now you got your Instagram followers and you go on stage, you got a certain you know follower. Like, you know I mean? Right, if, right. If a comedian's on stage, you heard of him or saw him before. Hmm. And now back then, it's... Well, when you first go up, a lot of me, you still, it's, it's still a test, but I did feel a uh, couple places you feel it and you know things have changed. You're like, mm. damn, because sometimes you want that feeling back to know if you're really being funny. You know what mm. I mean? Because... I stepped on stage, you know, stepped on stage recently, and people cheering and clapping because they've seen you do uh -huh. stuff, and you're like, damn, it's kind of cheating a little bit. You know what huh. I mean? It's cheating a little bit because I want to say some shit and know if it's really funny rather than just because I'm me, yeah. say it. And a lot of comments get lost in that. I ain't gonna, I mean, I don't want to say I'm better than niggas or what niggas do. I'm saying that. No, I'm, but really, I invite them comments yeah. out of my show all the time on Monday, like, come do some new shit. But it, the fear, they, they get it. Yeah. They think they, they think they just go on stage. How about Dave Chappelle? Oh, he's great, too, huh? He's, Dave would go up anywhere. That's what I, he's one of the few people I couldn't even challenge. Dave goes to my show all the time. He does, because I do the improv on Mondays. Dave will come down and just go up and do two hours. I don't stay for all his shows all the time, because sometimes you're up there forever. Yeah, he's really. Great. And he up there tearing me apart. D Ray, want me to go to the disco. I totally think I always have respect until Eddie Murphy was the greatest. And I saw this um, documentary on Richard Pryor. He went on stage to do a show, he bombed. Uh. He fucking bum. He would He he couldn't even make himself. He nobody like everybody was just what the fuck's going on. He went home, came back the next night. They let him go on stage again, and he fucking killed the show. Mm. He wrecked them. They never laughed. They were taking them out into the hospital. Listen, man. If I did that today, they wouldn't even let me come back. They arrest me if I tried to come back the next day and perform. He came back the next day and ripped him apart. Did you ever see that documentary? No, nah, I said that. Oh, no. he's a monster. Nobody's in his league. After that, you'd be so depressed. You'd be, you wouldn't want to go near a stage. What's, it's what he's... It's, he's a vicious It's what monster. he's saying. You he's can't... He's not normal. He's not a normal human Yeah, being. no, no. There's, there's no... No fucking There's way. no comparison to the pain that he dropped on stage. Because nowadays... Now you got to so, go back the next day. Not even 24 hours to face that pain again. No, there's nobody on the nah, stage. Nobody on this planet could ever match him. Mm. His nerve, oh, get the fuck out of here. You can't. Nigga, when I lose a fight, I be so fucking mad. I be so, I be, I'm almost paralyzed psychologically for a week. 
But Mike, let me tell you, it's some comics, man, uh, who go up every night and bomb. <laughs> they still want to go on stage. They think this is the night or this is the no, crowd. Man, listen, exactly. They don't even want you to go near that stage, right? But they know they let them go up. I, but I personally, and I'm, I'm not saying, I'm just, not just putting, I'm just, star. I'm just putting this out there. Since that moment, them 13 minutes, I've never, I've, I've had half a bad show. I've never yeah. had a bad show. I've always been, I've always been able to find because. I was raised by my granddad who's a talker in the room. So I was always able to find somebody or something that I'm gonna relate to that's gonna protrude energy out. Mm. The worst show I ever had, the worst two shows I had was both music shows. One time I only had 10 minutes of material and Met the Man Red Man had me open up. They was doing the blackout tour. <laughs> and I was out of material and them oh, niggas was wow. 45 minutes late and the crowd was looking at me like, what's next? And I, and I, was, <laughs> I was all out of the, where the ladies? Uh, where the women? How everybody oh, doing? Fuck. I was this close to break dancing. I ain't gonna oh, lie to y'all. Fuck. And them niggas finally showed up, and I was like, Phew. and even then, Thank I was God. just like, yo, what you drinking over there? Like, still, I wouldn't let the crowd, but I also wasn't being challenged to, t to tell my story like Richard was saying how his mother was in a, in a, a prostitute, and them, them kind of stories you transition over, but he did give me the confidence to say, because my mother was on drugs for a long time, mm -hmm. my mom was on crack and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It did give me the confidence to, to go on stage and not be afraid to tell them kind of stories, or my wife mm. at the time, me, me getting divorced at 18, 19 years old, me on wow, stage hurt, and a nigga fuck. in the audience yelled out, that's why your wife in um, Cancun with my nigga. Oh, fuck. And we weren't even divorced yet, and I stopped. And it was like, long, the longest 10 seconds ever. Come back at and it. I was like, and I was, I, was like, I, was like, I was like, man, I, I said, nigga, she didn't win a lot of places for cheaper than that, like some, forgot what it was, but, but I can't lie, like that wasn't a kid. I can't act like that wasn't a kidney shot, though. And I remember yeah. the comics in the back was like, ooh, even the comedian, everybody felt it. It was like, we were one person, everybody, God damn, like, why would he say that shit? And that, and, and moments like that, that you're not afraid to drop on stage. But the worst shows I had, like that show, and I did, I toured with Kanye, and oh my God. I went up there in between. I guess some, for some reason, Rihanna couldn't do the tour no more. <laughs> I never asked why. I just jumped on the tour. And it was, I was going up between while they was changing the sets in the back at Madison Square Garden. 22,000. And I'm up there in, in the middle while they're changing between the two people going, What's up, New York? And a Bulls jersey. <laughs> yeah, man. So times like that. But I've never experienced just straight up boo. Uh, I just won't. And maybe, that's be, and be maybe so because, tough. maybe because. Brutal. Maybe because it's like, I, I, like I said, one, one man, the gift of gab is an important thing. Two, people like Richard and Jamie and all of them lay so much foundation for comedy that people have a different respect for it after they seen all that happened. So we wouldn't experience no mm. kind, unless you, like even Def Jam not the same no more. You would never go through that audience where people just like, boo, boo, just straight up. That never Fuck you. Again. Showtime to Apollo, they, dude, now it's bullying. Like if they put you on stage and you get booed, like they don't boo at the, the Apollo no more. And they might, they, it, they, for a second, but they wouldn't air it because you might sue, because it might, it's just, yeah. Mm. Just the shit you don't go through no what? more. What? So. I think it's good. Everybody needs to taste adversity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, failure no is, fuel, mm -hmm. is fuel for success. Yeah. I think I was so no scared question. of the bullshit that that's why I went so hard every time. I think yeah. I was like, fuck this, because that shit get out quick. Yeah. <laughs> you step off stage, the whole world knows what just happened. Yeah. Now, like you said, everything, D-Ray just bombed. D-Ray yeah. just fucked up. Yeah. What, um, what do you think about, do you, do you feel like comedy is a lot different than it was when you came into it. Hell yeah. 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 And uh, it's words you can't say now. It's it's things. Luckily, I, you, I, I, I start I was messing with this girl that was on this kind of shit before this shit was happening. Huh. So we she, be places. So I'd she'd like, call you out on. I'd be like, look at that. What, whatever. How'd you talk? <laughs> and she'd be like, don't don't say that because that's <laughs> offensive. And I'd be like, and she. Uh, uh, <laughs> To real estate lawyer, and she'd be like, I can't say this kind of stuff. Means this is yeah. 12, 13 years ago. And she'd just say it, and I'm like, really? Like that word offend? But they say, no. Yeah. So I was luckily prepared because if I talk the way I talk, then now, even it, I look at some old say, okay, you can say nigga. Oh, no. they, you can't, they can't take nigga from nigga. 
Fuck, man. They can't think about it. They can't imagine <laughs> taking niggas. How mad niggas would be saying oh. we can't say it's a, it'll be a movement. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be a, it'll be a whole nother movement. You can't have a conversation That'd with a nigga. Nigga, nigga, nigga can't say nigga. nigga. <laughs> 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 it got too many meanings. Oh like, my hey, god. Too many fucking meanings. Hey, uh, oh my nigga. Like, can you got imagine that you can explain every meaning? Must be hundreds, a hundred meanings, two hundred meanings. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. Yeah. Words like that you can't get. But the but trust me, if somebody were to say that they are the the main nigga right now, because, which they can say, they come out and say, I'm the, I'm I'm offended by the word. Let's not say it. If somebody say I'm offended and they want to start suing people, niggas they gonna sue niggas out of nigga. And it's it's fucked up. Mm. You can't push nobody, you can't punch nobody that push you. This shit is it's mm. And I try to tell motherfuckers all the time, but like, yo, you about to make me offend you. Because I've done sets where I know I can't be president. Mm. I ain't gonna ever be president. Well, I ain't gonna, no, I ain't gonna be president. Now we think nah, you probably I'm, could stop. Nah, I'm a, man. Because anybody can, can clearly nah, be nah, president. Black. Can't, can't talk the way we talk and be president. Do you Somebody, really, really, tell me, do you think it's hard? Really, who think? It'd be tougher for a nigga to say nigga than a white person to say nigga, to stop saying nigga. How do you get how do you get them to stop saying how do you get a black person really you know really, you don't. how do you how does that really happen? To be honest, sincerely, how does that happen? I'm telling you, I think I didn't get an Emmy. I, know real, I think I didn't get an Emmy. Reverend Eva, yeah. when it comes, yes, brother, yes, brother. And, this, and then when it really ain't yeah. happened, this nigga here. Yeah. Uh, he just comes out this nigga here, did this. You heard you heard Jesse Jackson did <laughs> Jesse really? Jackson like yeah, when he was like, They got the nigga by the balls. He talking about he's talking about Obama. He uh, said, They got the nigga by the balls. So I was like, <laughs> Oh shit. Oh, but fuck. everybody no, nah, no, nah, you ain't gonna get that out of nobody. Man. We Especially, gotta, listen, that word, that word, people wrote books about that word. That word just um, stems up so much shit. That yeah. word, nigga. Yes. Yeah, but they, like they say, man, even if they buried the word, like NAACP was talking about burying the word, even if they buried the word, what would be on the tombstone? What would be on the headstone? Nigga died. <laughs> <laughs> nigga died here. <Yeah. laughs> nigga, it'll still be right there, so there's no getting rid of the word. I'm uh -oh. comfortable with it, but I know I said. I know I said it more times than anybody on any special app on Netflix. You heard it every day, Matt, have, how many times a day for 325 years or something like 250 years, something like that. You heard it every day for hundreds of hundreds of my, times a day, millions of times a day. How does that stop? It's so brainwashed, it's so in fucking and fucking dirt in our mind, our soul, our fucking barometer. But to, to take it and reown it or take it, I, I just man, I ain't gonna lie to you. I never <sighs> I never thought about not saying it. Huh. I just try to stop myself from saying like on the news and shit, but I'd be like, you know, it is hard though. Even if you're describing yourself, let's say you're saying it subtly. Not, uh, you're saying it like, it's harder on niggas. People get what you say, then you say, it's harder on black people, you sound like you're crying. Huh. You say it's hard on niggas out here. They mm. get it, everybody get it. Mm. Even the white people trying not to listen to it, mm. get what you're saying, because they can't say that. Because if you say it's hard on black people, they're going to be like, it's hard on everybody. Mm -hmm. But you say it's hard on niggas. Right, right. They can't even fight that. Mm -hmm. Police pull you over and you say, it's because I'm black? Get the fuck out of here. I pulled over four black people, four white people. I said, hey, just call me a nigga, huh? We not, let's not go there. Let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> let's not. Come on, guy. Uh, look, man, let me, I'm just going to give you a ticket. <laughs> it's, a different, it's a different thing. So, Is it something... You'd rather go not ahead, say, say it. Go on, say it, man. No, I'm, no, not. You, I'm playing. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Dude. I was told the only thing a black man and a white man got in common, they both hate niggas. Mm. Uh, that was told to you by a really angry dude. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, 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 no. He mean, no, no. He said, come on, no. Nigga, nigga action, though. That's what he's talking about. Uh, it's, it's nigga action. Yeah. He, was, he wasn't angry. Yeah, it's, he wasn't. That was just his mind. That was. I see what you're that was saying. Society. He, he grew up in the, the '50s. That was the society he grew up in. Mm. You know, everybody was fighting that certain type of black guy. Everybody teamed up. Black uh. people and white people teamed up for that particular kind of black guy to mm -hmm. keep him out of our circle, out of our society. Huh? Yeah. Well, sometimes you can make like fun, like, like me, like on stage. You make fun of it, man. It's, it's a fun word. It's a it's a cool word. It's a serious word. It's a like he, he said earlier. It's like so many descriptions of, of what it is, man. Like uh, YG got that song, uh, Rich Nigga wrote. Nigga, wrote nigga. And when they yeah, got ready to come yeah. on, I was hosting Poppy the other day. <laughs> they got ready to come on. I said, Fred, the DJ. I said, before you play that, let me make this announcement. White people, I'm watching y'all mouths. 
I don't give a damn if it's a song or not. You know what the mute and I, and I was watching in front. They was like, Rich. <laughs> now hard it is not to say nigga in a song. Uh, you know how hard it is for the rest of the niggas in Parrot? Man, come on, man. Come yes. on. Jay Z do a concert, Jigga, that's my motherfucker. And the white people are like, nigga. Make sure they try to <laughs> look around first. They in the car uh, singing it all the time, all day. So, you know, I mean, no, this, you're not gonna get rid of that. That word is that word is 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 prom- Obama still say nigga. I don't care. No <laughs> doubt about it. Oh, he definitely nigga. does. Definitely does. <laughs> I know he do. He, Obama guys say nigga at home. You gotta oh, this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michelle, is it something you'd rather say less or no? I would say, uh, because of my uncles and upbringing and how I've been around, because of them, and and just the people I was around, I would like to say it less. For my um, generation, and I do say less to the kids around me mm, mm. because I am an uncle, man. I always say, you know, like my, my, my sisters don't talk to their kids the way I talk to their kids. So if, you, if I call my nephew, I say, nigga, what you at school doing? He know mm. my mm. sincerity. Mm-hmm. Or it make them laugh a little bit when you're trying to say, nigga, nigga let me see your report card. Like you're that <laughs> uncle that make them feel, they feel like they're, part, they're your friend because yeah. it's the one word that I'm not, you know, boy, boy, let me see. Like it's, it's yeah. the, it's the it's the thing that make the, I'm make you the cool uncle too, like with them. So I would say less, but in society, as far as my Netflix special, me saying it over a hundred times, yes, I wish I'd have said it less. Uh, but I also wish I'd have had less tequila when I shot that too. Uh, but that damn show has something to do with the, the nigga count. I don't know. I think it's one of the, um, I don't know, it's one of the words that enslaved me, I think. Or I'm enslaved by it, so to speak. It's just who I am, you know. Mm. Nigga. Yeah, but you know another you know what the you know, you know. You know black people call everything nigga too. It'd mm. be a roach in here. Look at that nigga. Like <laughs> we just, uh, we I, just can't, <laughs> I can't imagine it not being in my um, vernacular. Yeah. You should take a week of you should do a week of filming with no, no we try not to say it. Like just try not to say it and see how many times you got ready to say it mm. and do a check. No, I mean I say it for a while, but it's in my it's in my yeah. mind. When I don't say this, it's going on in my mind. Oh. I'm saying it in my mind. You know what's funny yeah. is... D-Ray? I, I miss okay. that nigga. Ooh, my, you my, definitely. My, a long time ago. Yeah, Mike calls me that sometimes. Yeah. And I love it. I'm yeah. like... Now you feel like you really... I'm really... Yeah. Mike and I are really connected. Like Gary Owen said, that's what he has... Gary Owen has a black wife. He said that's when he knew he had made it. When she was, she was having sex and she was like, yeah, nigga. Yeah. He said, yes, finally. Yeah. <laughs> it's just tragic... If white people use it, yeah, you know, it, it become, can't go no other it way. It changes some, into something completely different. You can't say I've I've heard the most positive way white people said it, and they still got drugs. So I knew I've heard them say, "Look, you we're not going to say, say we're not going to say that word. We're not going to say nigger in this class." And right there, it's <laughs> oh, like, oh, no. oh, 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 you just no. said it. Not a white person could say, "You're not this. You're you're Listen, you're black people. You're not a nigger." And it's like, still, whoa. So there's just um. There's just some white people that just they think they're niggas. They're going to say it. They don't care who's saying it. They're oh, well, they grew niggas, up. And they're going to say it in front of cops and niggas, anybody. Or, they believe they're niggas. Yo, Mike, I was watching a, a video, and two white people was about to fight. Two white dudes. And they kept saying, nigga, what's up? Oh, my nigga, what's God. Up? Right here in the garden. What they, are you and doing? I was looking around like, yeah, where's the nigga? They don't say it in front of you. Your mother, they don't care. They, they, that's who they are. They're going to kill and die for it. That's, that's how intense that was. And they'll tell you where they grew up, yeah. too, like that matter. Yeah. Like, I grew up around. I go around you. Dude, well, Rappaport, remember Rappaport? Yeah, but he and his tense deeds kind of Did he? Died. Rappaport said it? No, well, nah, Rappaport said when he was a kid. He's not tense like Growing these, up in, in Brooklyn, he, him and his buddy were like saying it a lot. And, and his dad busted in the room and was like, whoa, whoa, what's going on in here? You know, and they didn't understand. Cause they, you know, and he until was just he did, like until he did and, higher learning. Yeah, he did the movie, yeah. and then he probably got it better. better. <coughs> Standing oh, up, shit. Fuck, man. Um, what are your thoughts on death, man? Are you a God fearing man? I'd say so. I say, I mean, when religious, the, spiritual. A uh, little bit of, little bit of both for that, man. Cause God, I feel like I make a lot of mistakes, and I talk to God on my own. I don't ever know. I don't ever. Ju- I don't ever know somebody else's relationship with God. Like I could be holding hands in a prayer circle, and when we let go, I say, "God, I don't know none of them niggas." <laughs> let me talk to you by myself. They could be lying. Let me tell you what I need. <laughs> this is what I need. 
and I, I pray for things. And sometimes, like today was a good day because I was uh, a good example. I was looking for a green jacket, and I always ask God for stuff. Like I, my, my bag be coming out, like off the plane. I'm like, God, I hope my bag is here. You be like, God, I hope I land safe. So I got ready to say, God, with my green jacket. I said, Nah, I didn't ask the, I didn't ask the, the nigga for too much already. <laughs> Let me not ask him about this green jacket because this might be a lottery ask. Or something. This might be my last ask. So I'll say, but I do believe. Uh, I got in trouble a long time ago because I was talking about the Bible and I was saying I don't know who really wrote it So I, I, and someone said um, it's not about you speaking about the Bible about as far as God goes but as far as what um, drives a lot of people and what a lot of people believe in so don't speak badly of it because it does inspire and you mm-hmm. don't want to talk about the things that inspire people but tw- between just me and God I feel like there's no way I would have gotten to if it wasn't somebody looking out I'd have been in too many messed up situations that somebody had even if God had an assistant down here mm. just looking out I've been in too many situations where I, I was supposed to be somewhere else or doing something different, mm. you know. And so, yeah, I'll say, I'll say that, man. I gotta, I gotta believe. I would, why I'm, do you think? Um, why do you think? Um, we we ask a lot from God all the time. Mm. What do we ever? What do you think we're willing to give to God? Because I'm I real s- selfish. I don't think I'm really giving. Anything I say that too. I say I don't think. Or the things we thank Him for is sometimes. Thanking him for something like God. Thank God the police ain't pulled me over with these guns in my car. Like, why do you think he should thank you? No, really, I need to understand. Why do I think God should thank me? Why do you think he should thank you? Why do you think he should thank somebody, somebody else or something? That, why, why should he thank? Why should he? What do you? What, like, yeah, like, like, oh, because I thank God. Why should? Why should you thank? You're right. That's a good question. Um, I think or God why ultimately. Should he bless okay, you? okay. I think God ultimately looks at who your true spirit is and the position you got put in. I don't think he places you in those positions. I think when you, in, it's like when you land here, you're all landing in the position you're in and, and your choice to be angelic in the moments that you know are, are serious. God, like I have this thing where if I see a homeless person, I get a feeling if they're, and I, I'm not saying I'm psychic, I get a feeling if they're truly wanting something in life and truly homeless and that person I help. That I could feel the, the other Suppose person. He really doesn't want anything. Why is it your concern? He doesn't want anything. Or not. Maybe he doesn't want anything. Fuck, he doesn't want anything, but he needs to be fed. No, Why no. Don't you look at it from that perspective. Because my mom did dope most of my life, and I've watched people need to be fed narcotics. I watched people need to be fed things they didn't need. I, I, I've, I've, I've made these choices before as a young man growing up. I, I, I know when I needed to be fed and what I was willing to sacrifice. Because some people, I'm willing to give that food to. Um, maybe that's what it is. Maybe I know who to throw the ball to. Maybe I know who, who needs this alley-oop in these moments. Or maybe I'm not going to not feed the one we're talking about, but I'll get back to him. But there's a line with everything we do, Mr. Tyson. There's a line we're in, and we don't even know why we're in that line. And you step out of that line for a second, somebody moves up. But I do that. With everything I do, there's comedians who I truly help. I see, I see it in them. They could not be funnier than the guy who wants to go on stage, but it's a spirit in them, and I feel it. I've always felt like this. So you decide who needs to be helped or not? And no, but who needs to be helped by me? Yeah, really. Who needs to be helped by me? Because we all decide that. No, uh, I don't know. I think that whoever needs to be helped don't have no objective. It's just no feeling that you should be helped. I don't have. But no, you, I don't think about their life. I'm not in person involved you, with them. But you going you just but you just said that uh, earlier today. Not to say that you're being contradictive, but earlier you're talking about the Rothschild and the other person. Yeah. So let's speak of the Roth children. Yes. I'm putting my life and my I'm the bank at that moment. I'm making a decision to invest in that person's situation for the moment because I've been in dire situations. I've called people when I needed things and I know why they didn't help me. I have to be accepting on the other side also. I've seen people get things that I thought I should have gotten and not been envious because I've never been. My biggest compliment to someone is always I'm jealous because I'm not afraid of that that thing that people say, oh, you just jealous. I'm not afraid to say I'm jealous. So I'm going to work harder is, is the rest of the sentence. So I want to when I, when I decide to be that person delivering what I'm giving to someone, whether it be time or conversation, I can't talk to I talk to somebody. I might talk to somebody who going to go talk to 30 people rather than talk to one person who feels selfish and not going to go tell nobody the system to, to better everybody else. I want to talk to somebody when I die tomorrow, when they share the information, they're going to share the people that know that life is not forever. I don't want to tell to somebody who like, I'm going to keep this to myself. So it don't have to always be the financial help. It could be any kind of, any kind of help. But I've, I've, my, like I said, my mother did dope, and I've, I've consistently so, tried to. So pretty much, that's just like what we were talking about with the Rothschild. Just since you didn't go by this rule, you're canceled out. 
and I canceled out. But in my mind, like you said, why should God thank me? That's where we started from. In my mind, I feel like I have a great, I'm a, I've been a great judge of character. And this is from selling dope all the way to jokes. i am be honest. Mm-hmm. I've been a great judge of character. I don't believe every police is a fucked up person. I like to I like to yeah. read the people and the person. I don't believe every I, I don't believe everything that I'll hear politicians say something that sound fucked up to everybody because we're looking for the fucked up in it. And I'll go, this is I get I want to take I'm sorry for being so weird. I like to take my life and people around me. Everything is like groceries with me. Everything. I'm I'm a good friend for like I'm a different kind of friend. Like I'm not a pick you up from the airport friend, but I'm a friend who sends you a car. Hmm. Uh, I don't I don't mix my groceries up. Like if I know you're a freezer nigga, I'm not gonna put you in a fresh produce aisle because we do that a lot with people. We say, so you, uh. wow, well, somebody expects so much of you just because you're, you're Mike Tyson, and they're trying to put you in an aisle that you're not in. That's not your aisle. So lo- if they love you and fuck with you in the aisle you're in, they'll never be disappointed by what they expected of you. Uh. So I put, I treat everything like groceries and food. I'll take the most fucked up things, like a politician say, I'll take the nutrients of what he said. And shit out the rest. Yeah. Like, I feel like Trump is the kind of guy who's like, yo, don't step in my yard unless you're cutting it. Mm. You know, unless you're bringing something. But there's certain things that he's done that got him to the position yet. I want to know what those things are, the positive things are, that get, whatever they were, positive, sneaky, whatever got, whatever the good, whatever it is. And then the other shit, yeah, we, he, the, the shit he be saying be fucked up. But mm. what got him there? And how could we get a black person or somebody who cares about us and power there with that same money that same thing the same thing to try to figure out a way to keep us all here who care about immigrants care about this care about that so I say I just treat it like food everything's like groceries so I'm not I'm not well, saying that's, what, that's, great, what, that's what you're saying is what everybody want to find out we want to find out how come the poor man is fucking blessed and how come the fucking rich man is cursed we yeah. want to know, know that that's just what basically you're saying why is that what, what, what we know right now about Mr. Trump is that the light is on him now and when the light is on you, nothing yep. can stop you. Mm. You can say fuck you, motherfucker, fuck you, America, fuck you, niggas. And, and how he and, is. And nothing can stop yeah. you. How the light is. doesn't last forever, but when it lasts, it's unstoppable. You know, and we don't want to believe that he has the light because some of us have such disdain taste for him. Mm-hmm. How could he get the light and not me? I'm more I, I'm more loving than him. I'm more mm. responsible than him. I have more class than him. I take care of people more than him. I, I'm just so much better than all around than he is. Why did he get the light? Right, so so that's more so what we were just saying collectively, you and me, kind of that that when I do deliver whatever bit of little bit, try to be a, a glimmer of light or a glimpse of light for somebody, my decision making that got me here. No one's ever said, oh, he gave him money and didn't give me money. Or nephews and nieces, like when my my nephew's grades weren't good and one was good, I gave them both the same money. I said because this is not dictating how you're doing in school because mm. I remember I wasn't that good in school mm. to me if I just got out of high school anybody out there know that it, I, I was smarter on another level I wasn't smart with every day I said well, I'm going to have these people that are in this school who are smarter than me who are talking shit I'm going to get them all jobs working for me and not in a way to say now you work for me never done that mm. I'm going to get you a job because you're good at what you do and that's what I'm. A, that's what the energy I want to give out Comedians talk shit about me. People say I was been an asshole and I was never nice. Whatever they want to say, they don't know my my mind state was I was being a businessman first. And when I try to say that to them, it bores the average comedian. What it kind bore- of businessman you want to be? I want to I want to control everything. I I want to be. Well, hey, take it easy. <laughs> hey, listen, I love this part of you right now. Why? You, what happened to you? Why are you so? In, why are you so intense? With I have control? no idea. Why do you want control? Why do you want power? Did somebody hurt your feelings a long time ago? No, I just watch people's feelings get hurt. <laughs> I, I, I like when doors are open, and um, if the only reason the door should be closed is because we locked it ourselves. Huh? I like doors, and I like making doors and building doors. Yeah, I like people saying I like I like when a, a young lady tweets, "I'm taking my last three hundred dollars to take some homeless people to the." I, I want her to be like I want to get her a place. I want to get her. You know what I'm saying? I like I'll take my last money if I believe in what. If you ahead of me, it's just always been like me. I, I tell people this all, all the time. Well, I'm helping you with money because I've, I've reached out to people and nobody fucking helped me. I remember the moments, but I'm not mad at the people that did it and they had the money. I watched them buy, buy a fucking watch for a bitch and do this and that. I'm like, yo, well, people owed me money and they went and did other things before they got back to me. Who, 
whoever's in the position of power at that moment to make the best decision should have that power. Why I'm going to hold on to the water and I'm on fire. Mm-hmm. If you out the fire, I'm going to give you the water so you can pour it on me or, or go or keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. We don't never treat none of our, we rarely treat our hustles like a baton. Nobody ever passes mm-hmm. it forward. Everybody never understands the relay race and it could come back to you again. Nobody. So mm-hmm. I think I always, I want that. I want that power to be able to distribute and it come back and people understand. And not for the good or bad, I love barter system. They'll tell you, I'm not a front. Anything you see me fucking looking like I'm shining, this shit was free. Or I had to make a decision when they was doing hip-hop squares and say, give me back, give me four shirts or give me the watch. And I was like, let me get the watch because the watch will put you in a room with the situations to be able to con- have a better conversation to get more watches for more people. You know what I mean? So that's that's what I want to be. That's my, so my passion. Pretty, is so you're pretty much saying that um, you did this yourself. No one helped you. People helped no, people people no help me with conversation, but then nobody get. People help me with conversation, but no one's ever given me nothing that I didn't give back like four or five times. I had to. You can't expect to get anything back, back. when you get it. I would, when you give it. Sir, I, I've said this a minute. Every time I give money to somebody, I'm like, I'm giving mm-hmm. it to you. They said the best way to get rid of people is a loan of money. I'm saying that's in another <laughs> no, in another light of it. I believe it. in that too. But like right now, like I'm I'm like what you're doing right now. You're taking your you, you, it's in your time. It's in your moment. We on Tyson Ranch. And it's all your shit. Like I want my shit, and I, I don't, and, and I, I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to. You, you, you've been through whatever you've been through to get here. I don't know the ins and outs. I only know what I grew up watching and, and what parts I loved and how you always my champ. But I don't want to fight the way you fought, sir. I don't want to take a rib shot. I don't want to did not. I want, and I still want to figure a way where everybody can ha- can get to. I still want this. Hey, check this out, right? This is interesting. You say that. You don't want these rips. You're going to get it. To get this, you're going to get it. I want my knockdowns to be different. I'm saying no. no I'm to saying get, no. To get what you want in life, yeah. you're going to get those shots. You're going to get hit. You're going to get knocked down. You'll get the feel of it. No, I've, mean, I've been hit, but I'm talking about the way you hit people. No, I don't want to get No, no. You're not getting this. I, I know what you mean, in sir. Life, I, you're going to get it. You're going to get it because this doesn't come without a price. Right. None of this stuff so comes all the, I'm saying all, but all, the, all the things I go through and all the things I've been through, I'm saying ultimately this is what I, I, I was Politely saying, sir, I, I want to get to this point, but you're employing people, people happy to go to work, comfortability, and to know that your name is on something that you can leave that people, people cared about what you did rather than just stepping on your name on a Hollywood square and say, who is this? I've, I've walked up and down that street, and there's so many stars. I go, what did this person do? Like, And what was the other side? Because it's... Mm-hmm. That's why we so live in the day information. You find out while you're looking at them on your phone. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> what he did. <laughs> yeah, know? man. You know what I mean. I was like, no, really, like, you do. That's what I would do. Boom. That's what I look at. Cause information. Information. Mike is just Q constantly right. downloading information. Yeah, I want to be the information giver. I, I mean, I can't. I can't explain it, man. I want to invent. Like this, they want to invent something imagine, small that get that everybody imagine, needs. Imagine you were the giver of information. Imagine that you'd handle that. No, really, you think you just said something really intense. Can you handle that? Give my information? No, no, you, you, you're, the, you're the leader of information. Be the giver of, of course. information. Of course. I love information. giving you information. Give. Really? I love being, I love looking at the maze and making it amazement. Who created huh. God? That's not in the Google. You can't Google that. No, who created God? Who created the thought of God? No, no, God. No, it's the thought of God. No, God is no thought. No, it would be the who created the thought God of God because somebody thought. had to. God gave right. you thought. There's so, no thought. So, right. So when you got here, God gave you thought. So you have the thought of God first. No, that's not the thought Before of God. Before the presence. I don't have the thought of God when I first open my eyes. When I first open my eyes, I don't want to know what the fuck is going on. Oh, I'll be like, thank I God. I'm up. My father, mm-hmm. hospitals and whatever else, the yeah. first bed I've been in, whatever it is I remember. But I don't have no concept of well, God. I'm never going to say who, who created God. That's something. Come on. No, but you, you're the master, you're the giver of information. But even that information not in here. Excuse me? Even that information not in your phone. You can't Google that. You can't God Google that. Try it. Let's see. You <laughs> no. never know. No, because God can be like, oh, you checking me out? What you want to know? <laughs> no, Mike, it's Wednesday. I'm playing a lottery, man. No, God gave, God gave you that mind. Hey, you think you want to know something? Figure me out. Figure why, figure why I put you in this planet. Figure why I gave you a purpose. Figure the purpose that I gave you. Figure it out. Yeah, sometimes you outside. Sometimes people leak outside of their purpose, like you said. But God also gave us the minds to make decisions, and the mistakes. See, I was listening Maybe. as you gave me information earlier. Yeah. I'm taking all this in. This is, 
know how much this class will be talking to you? <laughs> Professor Tyson. Yes. Yeah, you ever think about look, everything that ever happened to you, all the people you drove by and called, what the fuck is it? What's my purpose to even know this person? What's my purpose? Why did I beep at that girl? Why did I even meet this guy? Well, I know I beeped at the girl. How did I, how did I get her as my publicist? You know what I mean? How did that happen? How did I get the agent? How did I get here? How did I get around here with Tyson and them and doing that, this, this podcast? How did this first start? How did I get the fucking desire to be on that fucking mic that first day? It's the one to be a comedian. Where did yeah. that come from? You're right. That feeling. I, th- I, th- I want people to look at me and see me. This is just way too... You know, but deep. even if I wasn't seen, I to still want to be part of comedy in some kind of way. No, but it's just that thought. Of, it's like you said, it's a thought. It's a thought... What gave you the thought of the courage? Nobody would have that fucking courage. You know, what, this is where I belong. God put this in my mind. This is where I belong. I'm walking up. To, you can't pay me to walk to a mic. And you? For, and for nothing. You have to go up to this mic. You can't mic, go up to that mic right now and you start entertaining right now off the cool, right off the back. No, I'm not doing that shit. You crazy? I think you can do it. You already do it. You're touring no. and doing it. No, but I wouldn't do it if I'm not ready. Right, right, right now. Do it right now, Mike. Right now, Mike. Right now. Get on the stage right now and do your show. What? Oh. Fuck no. Well, we kind of do that. No, I'm talking about me going on stage doing my one man show right now, Mike. Get out of the fucking, get out the seat, take off the headphone, do it right now. <laughs> no, that kind of, yeah, that's, no way. Hell no. It's hard. Well, I know when Mike get intense, I start sweating. He start asking me about God and all that. Was, <laughs> a couple of intense smoke. dudes I ain't in smoke here. Anything. No, because it's because a trip. Because sometimes you think about God and you say that because I say, "Womb." You wake up in the middle of the light and, night and you say, "Wow." I'm um, what 53. I said, "No way, I'm gonna see 53 more years." So what happens after that? Do I do my eyes close when I die? Do I wake up from a dream? What happened? I can't imagine this energy I got just blacking out, not existing no more. So where does it go? Mm. Mm. You know? We'll find out one day. One day. God will show you when you get there. It has to be magnificent because life is magnificent. Yeah. You know? How could life how could how could life be magnificent and death be bad? How could God want to create you and make your life miserable for dying? That'd be dumb. My whole thing, I just want, okay, now, we, okay, now since we're talking deep, I just, I'd rather die regular, though, you know what I mean? Because you never know if after you die, you got to come back looking like you went. You know, well, I don't want to be, I want to be decapitated and I come back out well, of hold my head. We never saw a decapitated motherfucker walking the streets and riding a horse, have we? <laughs> <laughs> zombies? Excuse me? Yeah, I've seen zombies. I love zombies, yeah. Definitely zombies. I believe zombies, I believe that's real. Could, yeah. come, could come back. Yeah. Graveyards are getting full. They are among us already. Mm-hmm. Um, well, what's what I think is also an interesting uh, tie-in is you're in a show called Snowfall. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a good show. And we that had like Rick we had show? Rick Ross think, on the pod. I think so. Uh, but, uh, but that was with uh with with uh, John Singleton. So I think they've had conversations too. Hmm. So that, did they not? Did he not say that? Uh, I don't remember. He, he said that here. Snowfall was based on his story. I don't know. Okay. Did he say it yeah. happily? Um, he's he's got some straightening out to do. Like for instance, the rapper Rick Ross, he feels like he's paraded around as an ex drug dealer, the freeway Rick Ross, and is unwilling to relinquish his name and all that shit. So he won't let the name go. But I think that anybody should pay. If I so you start rapping and your name Mike Tyson. You got to pay, you know, that's, yeah. I think that's just fair. Yeah. I like fair. That's another thing, too. I like I like what's right. If you know it's right. And I didn't know that when he first came out, though. I just like, I like the Boss song. When yeah. came out. I didn't, I had no idea that that was. Yeah, I know. I know. Him. But I'll say uh, Snowfall is um, John Singleton always had a thought process of how, you know, with the cocaine game, yeah. getting here and everything. Even though he was removed himself. Uh, he was around the people and stuff like that. And I think him and Rick have had come not in depth probably. I'm sure they the show have. Go. Yeah. Because he sure don't he don't step into the, he don't want I know he usually don't want to step into too many worlds that he don't do the right understand. Do, or or get, nigga research. don't want to get sued or anything. Yeah, anything, yeah, yeah so. for sure. It's season two? Season three now. Season three. And tell us about your character and, and where the show is at right now. Uh, you got to publish. You making money I'm, now? How that fucking shit feel? <laughs> you got a nice car and shit? I got okay. I, I'm a, I'm not a car dude, so I got the same car I've had since 2007. Right, cool, cool, cool. What are you? What kind car. of dude are you? Do got a house, a nice yeah. cool house, like houses. Shit. Yeah, yeah. I like homes. I like um, 
I like going places. You like one of those guys like to save money. And I like, like to spend and shit. I do a little bit of both. How do you do both? That's interesting. That's interesting. I, I do saving both because, and spending. Okay, I, I do both by I go and I perform, and I'll take the money I perform um, with, and that's why I invest in my shows that I do all the time. I do like so I still produce my own comedy shows. My How's own. that coming along? Oh, fun. Really? It's my favorite thing to do. But I still, and I'll take the money from the shows, put that up, or invest in my show, and I'll take the money from the after party I get paid, and I'll spend that. Which kind of counts each other out. So I get paid to party in places, and I come to LA and pay to party. So it's fucking weird. Where do you live? Here, uh, Chicago, live in, but here. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm in Hollywood here, too. Okay, so. cool. Yeah. Nice. But yeah, my, my character, Peaches, he, uh, he's just a, a, a murderer. Hmm. <laughs> That's it. It's a killer. That's a quiet killer. That's it. I just shoot people. That's it. <laughs> you ever think about one of the awards and shit, like for movies and stuff? I practice. Yeah. Nice. How I does pra- that I practice feel? My awards. <laughs> How does that? I mean, you probably get to bring in a lot of comedy into that character. No. Are you, you practicing no? in the mirror? Is it a really dark character? I practice all the time, like for you no really? reason. I practice everything. I also practice That's being. That's what I used to do too. I practice on the elevator, like if the elevator gonna crash, I practice like. I'm like, get out of here! Man. I swear to God, You're crazy dude. I do. I practice you feel like it? I, pra- I practice because I've been in acting roles where they tell me you gotta act like you're intense, and I'd be like, oh shit, I just did the show on the elevator, and I got it. So yeah, <laughs> I practice everything, man. I practice, you know, practice talking to the girls, practice the macking, practice. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So you like acting as well. Yeah, it's, it's cool, man. It's, it's a step outside of yourself, you know, especially, to, you know, like getting to do things like what I did on Empire and that one. I'm just yeah. shooting my, like, like 21 Jump Street. Yeah. Shooting guns and this shit, I'm, shit I look weird doing. Shit, yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Do you ain't doing shit? No, you look good, actor. though. Yeah, I, I think, um, I got a couple, I got a couple of movies coming out like that. I never think about that. I think, think about producing. Leading, man. Yeah, but I think yeah. more so of producing the film that I'm in so I can have more. Yeah. You're a big picture guy. Yeah, you like the. I like what John like, like what John Singer. That's why I'm glad it came you. up. I like that he, he what he wanted to do. You want your story to get out. You know what I mean. You want it to be told correctly, not like telling other people's story correctly. I guess um. When your movie coming out? I don't know. <laughs> Is Jamie still playing you? It's supposed to be that way. <laughs> I wouldn't want nobody else. He's the only nigga that could do it. I mean, yeah. I ain't gonna say that. I ain't gonna See, say no, that. I was the kind when I was a young kid and I was fighting this stuff. I, I was so egomaniac. Guys. I wanted to be always in the front. I didn't give a fuck about back and who's making more money. This is me, motherfucker. Look at me. As my as when I was like 2018, that was just my mentality. I just never was nobody as a kid. I just wanted to be somebody. Wanted everybody to see me and shit. Mm. I think you achieved that. Yeah, too. very much so. People definitely see. People can't unsee. You, you. realize that, yeah. The comparisons yeah. is the thing that make I crack up all the time. Like it be two little bitty box, and they be like, "He's like the mic." I'm like, "Get the fuck out of here!" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ever seen him fight? You know, just for no reason. And you can watch him a hundred times for no reason. I just go to YouTube and be like, "God damn!" Like it changed your day, man. You be like, "Look at the, just the, the amount of just." Energy, and then it comes a time in your life that that's a blur. You don't even think about that no more. When you're on this next journey. That doesn't mean anything. The thirst of you know success and hunger is still there. You want to, you have to move on and on and on. What am I gonna do after this? Do banking now? What if I'm still alive? This is just what it is. You got that thirst to want. You want to be successful. You want people to see you. You want people to know you're the best. You were that poor kid. You don't want to ever go back there to kid mm-hmm. again. You don't want your kids to go back there again. My kids think I'm a nut. They have to think I'm a nut. Well, yeah, I've said that a lot of times. I don't want you broke again. You say that a lot. I've said that a lot of times. Like, damn, I'm broke not, again. That's not true, but um, you're talking about you don't want to, you don't be able to have any more cash because there's some of the richest people in the world and they're financially and spiritually broke. Mm. We all have to fight that, you know, that battle within ourselves. Yeah, that's consistent. Yeah. Many times you wonder Everybody's what Everybody's going to make money But everybody's not going to have That spiritual awakening Yeah yeah That's true I always think about that Like you never it's, it's moments you wake up You just You're not happy all the time You're wondering what's going on what is, What's missing You know And moments like that I ain't going to lie them, The moments to pray The moments to just not, And I ain't going to say I'm not talking about the super spiritual I'm talking about Hey God I don't know what I'm feeling right now But whatever it is Help me just figure it out That's, that's me my, my prayers be like I don't know what this feeling is like I hope everybody okay. Like it's in your stomach. You like what 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 needs to be done that's that's missing? Because it's not the money thing. You know what I mean? I've I've left casinos and have won big and still didn't feel complete. So I know you know the feeling. Mm-hmm. That rush was just that moment of playing, but yeah. you still feel like. And I've I've woke up uh, in the uh, bed with lovely situations and still <laughs> didn't feel like 
my whole, like, you know. Because we don't understand our concept of self-love yet. You know, how could a guy like maybe 20 years, 19 years old, have all the money in the world, all the girls in the world, all the best liquor in the world, the best weed, the best cocaine, the best everything, money could buy, and I'm just still upset and happy and I want to die. Why is that? Because I don't have no um, perspective of love of self. So I react out by being the meanest and nastiest motherfucker on the planet because you haven't had that concept of self-love. It's not something that you easily grasp. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. You know, a lot of us say we love ourselves and we do this and do that. Me loving myself is um, going out with a, with a hot chick or buying a great car or a house or a plane or a great suit or something. That was my aspect of loving myself when I was younger. That's what I believe loving myself was. Not getting any rest, not taking care of myself, not, you know, eating the proper foods. You know, not just, just, just caring about me, just meditating. I had no concept of love, of self. Mm. So you have to go through that really dark moment in your life to become humble to fucking before it could even be allowed to surface. Mm. It's true, man. Damn. Well, you come in and everybody's got chaos in their head, you know? Our parents, the people that yeah. around us, our teachers, our family, you know, the other kids. You know, so you come in and you're just in the midst of chaos and it's just constant shit flying, mm -hmm. you know? People putting each other down, fucking criticizing, judging. Yeah, exactly. Who in fucking, your family think you owe them something? Uh, Who in your friends think you owe them something? They were there before you hit, so just because they were, they were present, you owe me something. I was just there. You mm -hmm. did more for me than I did for you, but I was just there when that went down, so you kind of owe me. Don't got no friends like that, Mr. Tyson. Fortunately, you know, I mean, wow, what that's. I, I didn't. I didn't grow. I have. I have my one friend. The, the Larry. Larry's my friend. I have really people shout out me. to Larry. Larry Law. Law dog. But other than that, I don't really Larry, got no. What do you have? That Larry's only one friend. You must have been a miserable kid. <laughs> no. <laughs> You've been a miserable. You had no friends, man. <laughs> I, I really did, man. I really. Did. I can't think of nobody. No, no, man. I love. You know, I don't. I don't know if I had friends when I was a kid, but when like I'm 10, 11 years old, 12, I can go in any neighborhood and never have to worry about people bothering. Me, man, it's like I would rob people in any neighborhood. I would go in, and people say, "That's that fucking dude, that fucking dirty ass Mike." They would know. Everybody knows. Well, I had a, I conceptually. Field. I mean, just I I'm, that guy. If, if, if the concept of what a friend is, if the people was around me, but I never was like, like, oh, it's a group of guys you can associate me with, because I got brothers and sisters all day long. That's that was. I guess that was more like uh -huh. my big brothers, like my friends and people like that. So I never really had like, I never was. Inf my mother knew I was never influenced by shit. I was never. That's why. I, I ain't gonna talk and get into like my, my kids and daughter, but I never had that influence. No one could ever talk me into doing shit. I, I used to sit and look like, well, y'all have fun doing that shit then. I never had a like a push pressure because my mother was, I was like terrified of her for one and mm -hmm. drug addict or not. She had this hold on me that was like, you know, she probably the person that says, you know, I owe her or something because how she is every now and then. She'll say like, <laughs> she don't know. Maybe she'll know she's lying. She'll be like, I remember I told you to get into comedy. I'm like, you ain't never told me. <laughs> <laughs> you've never told me, Ruby Renee Davis. You've never told me to fuck with no comedy. That's uh, really but, funny. but I'll let her say it. I'm like, Mom, remember I told you to get on stage? You said, remember, I remember when I first named you. I remember when I first said DeRay. I knew that name was going to be. I'm like, Mom, you ain't never. You never called me DeRay growing up at all. And then when I made my name D, my name is Antoine DeRay Davis. When I said I'm going to go by DeRay, and then whatever it did, however the fuck, what I'm, what I'm supposed to be now, she'd be like, DeRay, my son. I'm like, yeah, all oh, people, it's, it's, it's definitely people like, I say older people that was involved in things that I, I, uh, I thought was glorified then. You, you know wasn't a smart nigga that stayed away from them bad guys, huh? Nah, I, I just like to... Like I was one of the niggas driving a Corvette when I was like 15 and 16 because the old, the older drug dealer dude trusted me because he knew I'm going to get shit done. They knew I was going to get shit you done. Worker, Interesting. Huh? You were the worker, huh? I got shit done, man. That's how I, like I figured. That. I always figured. Interesting. I always wanted to figure stuff out. My, my older, like even when I started comedy, the guys who were helping me were like 40 and 50 years old. And they just was like, they'd rather give it to me, the money. They knew I'm going to flip it. I'd be like... Like, Matt, going in the room saying, hey, man, this ain't a drug deal. I'm going to take this $10,000. Give me a week. I'm going to bring you back $15,000. They're like, and it's not a drug deal. It's a comedy show. The motherfuckers <laughs> are like, get the fuck out. And now, you know if you don't bring back my money, I'm like, I'm going to kill I'm you. A, I got kill it. You. But give me fifteen, and then you get 13000 you walk in that motherfucker shaking like a motherfucker. And I'm like, here, um... 
Yeah, a two thousand, but I kept the two and I'm a flip. You like, man, I had them moments, but I would take that and I was flipping it. I was flipping that. I was I was able to do it. Wow. I could never sell drugs. Drugs just was too slow for me. Some <laughs> drugs were too slow. So standing on the Shit. fucking corner all day. Nah, I did. I, I, still, I, I probably stood on the corner uh, all of, if all of the years I've done whatever I put myself to, probably fourteen days, maybe maybe two weeks total, because I was always like. It's a, it's no a way around this shit. Where's the excitement of standing on the corner waiting for a fucking transaction? Nothing. Transact? Nothing but them little boys going to get new J's. But what's what's exciting about being a nigga 16 years old with pounds is very exciting. Yeah, I can see that being exciting. Yeah. I just never gotten the I could walk in a room and know. I could walk up. You could put it in my hand. I could. I don't even need it. I never had to weigh it. I know if it was right or not. I know it was bunk. I, and I knew the little kids who was like trying to come up. And I knew I could take some bunk weed, mix it with that sugar water, throw it in the microwave. <laughs> Why? Puff up and go I sell it real fast. I understand that. That didn't make sense. Why would I sit down and, and sell it all day when I can wait for you to do it? And once you finish selling it, I just say, give me that fucking shit. Yeah, but you would know. I go, but we knew. Hey, later. I'll hang I know. Right over there. Come over there. Hey, but we knew, those, but we knew those guys too. We knew those guys that was, that was going to do that too. And, they, and I was so cool with them. That they'd be like, D, they making rounds today. Get <laughs> the fuck up out of here. And I'm oh, like, yeah, nah, like, I got it, bro. Because I had to, I had to, other situations too. And nobody had girls. Like, nobody had to do it. I don't know. I just, I hey, just was, he's romanticizing his whole lifestyle. He loves it. No, no, I just, I just, I just knew the company. <laughs> no, I just love. <laughs> no. I just love the cop. I love the cop. Like I like the Nino Brown shit. I ain't like all that. Like I don't. I don't want to see people all cracked out and everything. You know, my mom. Like I said, she she went through her era with the drugs, so I ain't really rock with that. But the other shit, man. Like just on some to see people making money now. Weed is fucking hilarious. Yes. That the government. I'm like you motherfuckers. They, I was the hiding the shit out they of. They wrong. They've been lying terrible. to us for so long about so many drugs that they still hide from us and tell us it's bad if we use it. We're going to jail. Yeah, man. I'm hurting myself, and you're going to put me in jail. <laughs> That's what you believe. That I'm. You put put me in jail from hurting myself. I'm going to get locked up for years to prevent, prevent me from hurting myself. But you're locking me up with killers and murderers and rapists and the savages. You know what I mean? Because I, sm I smoked crack. Yeah, exactly, 100%. 100%. Ridiculous. Thank you, Mr. Government. Uh, what's your feeling on the state of things? The government, Trump, this new election. you have any thoughts? I think, it, I, think, I think it slipped away. I think people didn't pay attention in certain instances. I think we put people in positions of power, and once they get there, you got mad when they was exactly who they told us they was going to be. Mm. Trump has been the same guy as far as I see. I, 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 always, I, I never saw him as, I always thought he was funny when he wanted to be funny, like whatever they did, the, the acting and the Home Alone and the show, whatever he did, the, the Prentice, I always thought that was always funny, but I never looked at him like he gonna sit down with some niggas and be okay with it. So they parade, they put him in a position of power, they put all this emphasis on what, what popularity is now, just like, he was saying everything's TV, everything, this driven, that driven. So he already had the votes, and then he talked that shit. From the, the way a black person talk about black power and get people to follow him, mm. he talked that, that white shit, and they was like, cool. Hell yeah. He came out with a white rap album Jesus. with everything That's really older interesting people wanted to, to hear. That way. They wanted to hear, and they was like, we buying this, this right now. This shit finna go platinum. And they went and motherfucking bought it. Even the people that's uncomfortable with now got at home and realized it all wasn't hits. <laughs> his thought was his reality, and he made, he made it reality. It. I mean, the great thing is, the best thing about Trump is that hopefully he woke up a lot of people. You know, yeah, and, and you elected. say what you got to do, man. You know, that's the best thing that happened because we were all asleep. You know. Well, we see smidges of it though. We would see like not not saying it in a bad way. We see like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger becoming governor. We seen pieces yeah. of that, that, that that kind well, of not occurrence. Only, but and, not only the celebrity, but his rhetoric and all the fucking yeah. hate and the shit that he spews. You know, it, it was like, oh, this is America. No, no, I know, no, I know you exactly know? what you mean by that. But yeah. I'm saying, as far as the ability, yeah, yeah. To, to win it. Like, remember when uh, Gary well, Reagan, Coleman ran Reagan. for Reagan. Ronald Gov Reagan like, was in an actor. Moment, town, yeah. in, them, in them moments, I'm saying, yeah, Ronald Reagan was that too, but I mean like in them, but to see it all happen in the way it did here, like it was a buffoonery for a minute and here, everybody's like, I'm, I'm fucking running. Mm -hmm. 
and they knew what it was. And you don't, you can't take nothing like that for granted. You can't. Yeah, I, I never you thought can. you could take shit like that for granted. There's a lot of people that couldn't even grasp that he might win. I know. I know. People. I sat like, behind no a black way. dude at a bar, and he was like, "Trump finna win." He said, like, "He talking about this. He talking about that." And I was looking at the nigga like, "What?" You, you see, uh, he wasn't even talking to me. Talking to a young lady. He's like, huh. "Trump gonna win." He's like, "And he gonna do this and do that." And I was sitting there like, "Nah, nah." And in my mind, I wasn't a believer. So when I thought when I saw him on the stage against Hillary, I was like, oh, it's fucking fucked. Around. It's fucked. This is over. What's about? It was the lunchroom. Yeah. He hit it with the lunchroom. Yeah, this is over. Dude. You can't win a lunchroom. He hit it with the blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Look, at the, look at the lady talking. It was, look at the lady talking. Like, yeah, this like, he did, when he did this, when he said, yeah, 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 that shit, yeah. it was like, you. Wow. So I'm at home. I'm 50 years old. I've been watching niggas make money. I've been watching. <laughs> I work for, my son worked for a black person. It's awful. And I'm sitting watching Trump go, Oh hell yeah! Yeah, it's awful. Everybody, get up, These wife, cousin, exist. sister, niece, get up. These people exist. Came out of retirement to go vote. Yeah, they did. It's just like on. What, remember that movie with, with Chris Rock ran for president? Yeah, and, and he was uh, just when Bernie Mac was like running for the second. Right oh, when Chris yeah. Rock was this, but it looks like Chris Rock is about to win. All the white people <laughs> ran down to the polls. That's what it was. It's like we we can win. People were. Can't, I think it's people that cared about the climate of uh, finance, uh, finances in, in America, whatever, that didn't particularly fuck with him as a person. Uh huh. Just the whole thing, man. He put together just he put together a soup, man. Yeah. Yeah, dude. That it's was crazy. that soup. Then you maybe. Be important. Hmm? Do you feel you want to be important to society? I don't know what the, I'm trying to understand clearly. Like, influential. By the way, you talking about that lifestyle and, and that niggas talk. You like you like that lifestyle. Like, no. Wait, you, but do you want to be a leader in society? Do you feel you want that right? Do you want to uphold that fucking responsibility of being a leader? Yeah, I like that. But I need to make the note that the way that you just asked me that is the way that they would ask me in rooms about shit. How you just said. You want to be important? That sound like a mafia. I, oh, I'm like, wait a minute. God. Dude, we had this guy like, he, he, yesterday. Guy he took a moment. He's like, he like, you want to be important? I'm like, I don't know. What the fuck I got to... Maybe. <laughs> right? <laughs> but yes. <laughs> maybe. Yes, Mr. Tyson. I would love to be a leader, man. I, I feel like I'm a leader in the light-skinned community you already. already. Are. <laughs> I agree. You already are, man. I feel like yeah. not everybody listens to me, but I have, a, I have a good time talking to people, man. Yeah. It's funny you tell your kids, you're like, yo, check this well, out. Yeah, how you going to say I'm, r- I'm wrong when I just did, I'm on tour with Martin, I just did 13,000 people listened to me, but you telling me is your father that's wrong. I just had 13,000 people cheering, standing up, because what I'm saying is funny and obviously right to them in their mind, and you telling me that I'm wrong about telling you about these niggas you hanging around right now. Get out of here. It's a good argument. How you going to tell me that shit? You don't know shit. Well, dude, I think you should have your own podcast. That's so weird. No, I'm just going to come to sit on y'all's all the time. That's hey, you can come. You have you come anytime. You're saying that now, and then you start getting those likes, and you see how many people watching. You say, holy shit, I want more. And you get addicted to that. You say, wow, people really care about what the fuck I'm talking about? I don't care about what I'm talking about. And um, <laughs> you'd be surprised. It might not be as interesting then because I gotta have two people in the, smoking weed while I'm in the room. Oh, you can have that. For me to have this gun. Because I'd be like, I, that definitely influenced my conversation a little bit. I'm definitely something. Yeah. You're I'm a little say lifted high, right now. But, I'm, but it's not bad either. A little I'm levitated. gonna drink that water. I'm like, it's dude, good water. it's good. It's good shit. Won't get you high. I promise. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> stigma okay. of getting high either. That's a good stigma to have. The high getter. The high getter. The high getter? I get high, high, high. <laughs> Hi, hi, hi. Shit, man. Well, before we wrap this thing up, man, is what there do anything? What you want to do? You want to be a superstar? You want to be do movies? You want to do some big? I'm fucking put it out there. Yeah, family. put it out. there. I always, yeah, yeah. I've, I've done those, man. We, I've done the not. The, the, I've done the move. I want to be in a position where I'm doing my own stuff. I want my company, um, Full Custody Films, to be just that, running its own thing, have my own um, thing. Like you said, it, it starts with with things like this. I got to reach out to all platforms and have it have it done but yeah I definitely want to be a superstar but more than that I feel like I'm not I'm never going to be a superstar if I don't make somebody as great as I am like comedically or somebody get it or everybody understand I want comedians to have my biggest goal right now is for 
us to have some kind of guild. I've had friends die and had no money because all they did was stand up and there's no health plan for just stand ups and niggas to take your joke and put it on a, a podcast. You wouldn't even know. It'd be a, just an IG guy on here just riffing. I'll, and someone will never watch it. Comedians Guild. A comedians Guild, like something like that. Or we don't have a writer's guild for like when somebody take your joke and they put it in a movie. I just seen one of my uh, bits on a TV show that's a. And I, I posted back to back, and I was like, the writer seen my bid, and it's, it should be something. And wow. I'm in the Writer's Guild. Wow. I'm in the Writer's Guild. And it says blatantly, but then you got to go prove it's yours. But I just want that respect that comics, whoever wrote, like he mentioned Richard Pryor, is reasons we talk about people like Richard. He was his own person, his own jokes, his own things, and anything associated with him is his. That's where the ownership in my mind come from. Anything associated with me is mine. And if I make a mistake, because it happens, to comedians all the time. They walk past another comic and don't notice they're paying attention to what they just heard. Mm. If I make a mistake, correct me. Say, D, that's such and such bit he started on that day. That's what, I, I need that. But it don't, it, it's, it's a hard place to get to when people, you just go up there. I've told comedians, new comics, they'll do a joke and I'll say, your whole set was funny, but this joke in particular is such and such. And they're like, oh, really? Okay. See the nigga three months later, still doing it. Mm. I, I'm, I don't know how to explain it other than like, you don't it's like it. your block. It's like you he's like like the it. like the dope game. This my block. This my street. You know, I heard my, from a lot of entertaining mind. old guys like Sammy Dave. They said um, if they had what they had to tell me, the experience they told me, they said um, I worked too hard. I took myself too serious. Hmm. I should have had more fun when I was when I had that hunger of working so hard. I should have been having fun doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Worrying about am I going to really Just succeed or it. not? Just enjoying. You know? it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's go for the ride. That's the ticket. The right? journey. So I'll say that I definitely have a good time putting together shows. I definitely love booking comics. And I, I can't say I'm not having fun because, uh, yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we had, we had this That's one. Awesome. I mean, this is, you, you, they didn't get these opportunities either. Like, I imagine if Sammy, I imagine if Richard Pryor could have oh sat at God, had Red a podcast. Fox podcast or, that would have been beautiful. They would have uh, been cursing at each other. That would have been legendary. That would have been legendary. Legendary. Yeah, nigga. <laughs> yeah, oh, you think yeah. Oh, you would have heard niggas uh, so many times. Man, all those guys, man. They had their own podcast. That would be awesome. Yeah. My well, goal is to have a goal, damn it. <laughs> hey, it's good to be goalless because mm-hmm. then you're desireless. Desire less. And, and that's, that's our biggest that's that's our closest inclination to the devil. Our desire and our ego. I thought I dropped it on you. Desire. In Buddhism, That's the only thing that makes us uncomfortable. We have desire. That's why we get happy. We don't have it yet. My desire to have that, I don't have it. I'm not happy till I possess that. So I go through that period of unhappiness just because however long it takes me to possess that, and then I possess that, and it doesn't make me happy as I thought it would. Huh. It's all an illusion in our minds. Desires lead to suffering. Desirelessness is. How you know when you've reached enlightenment, when you're completely desireless. In I the just Buddhist imagined tradition. you in a white gown, floating, hair flowing. Jesus like, in the desire, motherfucking house. The swole Jesus is desired. Excuse me, the, uh, latte, please. Desire. I is. love it. <laughs> I fucking love that. On that note, we're going to wrap this shit up, man. Oh, Dude, man. thank you so no, much. Thanks for having me. You were the man. Thanks, thanks. You were so thanks awesome. For all the knowledge. That was really it fun. In. Well, you're welcome back anytime. Thank you. Anytime. Mike, great show. Hey, hey, yeah, you got any girls, man? In, in, uh, Couple in California that you really like? Cause I know when you start getting famous, they they come and they look really nice out here. <laughs> they look different. They got different energy than any girl on the fucking planet. True. Learn that from my daddy. You around the planet, you find a girl in Los Angeles have a different fucking whole inclination than any other fucking woman on the planet. Yeah, the hustle is in them, and you girls from floor, um, Los Angeles and Chicago. There's, there's no people like them. They're totally different kind of species of people. Now a little bit of Miami too. A little bit of Miami got that too. No, I don't go to Chicago and LA. This is the two out there. Different species. Chicago love. Yeah. And different species. compared to LA and Chicago for something else. Oh, no, Chicago got that. No, Chicago got that. Gangs, yeah. No, Chicago got that. that, that, Like the women are like, like, really bossy and don't fucking need you at all. I don't need you. Really smart. Smart. I don't need you. Strong women. I got it. Strong women. You know what I'm saying? LA is like, we, LA is all the women from all over the world that made it in their little cities. They're like, we should all, we could all make it. Then they get here. That's why you see a super fine girl working like at a regular place, like Chick-fil-A or something. It's like she ain't got, 
<laughs> You're an actress. Yeah, she's like, yeah, I'll let you know. My guy, my headshot's in your bag. But, uh, but they, <laughs> all the beautiful women. Husbands. They're looking for husbands. Or trips to Dubai. Yeah. Oh, they're not coming back because then Dubai's going to purchase them. <laughs> That's oh, why so it's called Dubai. It's dark. It's a dark road. <laughs> Do purchase. Yeah. LA, Listen, a stop go, on the go, dark road. Go Dubai, right, we're going, right. I'm with Frenchie. I go to Dubai. Frenchie has a party, right? So I go to Dubai, and Frenchie has the most beautiful girls in the world. I said, where he knows all these girls from? And I'm just realizing I was out on the street the other day looking in the stores and looking to buy stuff. I never saw any people at the fucking um, the counter to check. I said, nobody works in the town. So I'm like, where did all these girls come from? Where do they live at? And they just ship them in. Huh. Yes, they have a party. They ship them from all over the world. You have to have parties. Crazy. There's no, Crazy. There's no Party girls. There's no stability there. There's no people hmm. that live there. There's like great buildings, but no one lives in there. God, fuck that life, man. You know what I mean? All these great cities, the magnificent city, multi-billion dollar city, no one lives in the buildings. Yeah, it's Maybe so it's too weird. expensive. It's There's so nobody. weird. Say, so leave out of the big building and go home to their studio apartment. It's so weird. Expensive. Some new Louboutins. They offer people, they <laughs> offer people money to stay. Like some celebrities, they give them money if they live there and stuff. They make it, you know, so make weird. it, yeah. Like Vegas, weird? City? They don't have a structure system. That's what I want. They didn't have a structure system. Infrastructure? Infrastructure, yeah. They don't have that. They don't have. Like going to the grocery store they don't have going a judicial on? system. They don't, normally it's just, I have power. This is what you do if he does that. Right. I'm one guy, or this is my family. If he does that, this is what he does. All right, that's all right. That's it's okay right. if he does it. Right. This is what's going to happen. We all come to agreement this is gonna happen. Jeez, they don't have a, I don't they, know, yeah. They don't, they don't have the structure. Then the structure, yeah. Well over there if you're caught in a room with a girl and she's not your wife or w- walking down the street. If you in the, if you're in a room with your first cousin, if she's not your wife and stuff, you're in trouble. Right. Yeah. Like what? you can be arrested. Can you if be you're arrested? In a room with her and she's not your wife, you're going to jail. Yeah. Well, how did you do, in Dubai? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I, I don't know if it's for the locals, and I know me and my wife made sure that we didn't do have too much um, affection, public affection. Yeah, there's no public affection allowed. Yeah. They do some nasty stuff with that. Girls that flew to Dubai, I've heard some stories. Oh, but everything weird clothes, shit. you know. You know everything oh, I've heard some good. girls and let things weird happen to shit. them. Yeah. Fucked for that quick check. Shit. Fucked up shit. Forty grand to let guys do certain yeah, things. Fucked and up. Yeah. Bucks. 40 grand. Oh, I did 40 bucks. Talking about the extreme, the extreme models. Speaking of 40 grand. What happened? Oh, yeah, we did 40 grand worth of weed smoking. A month. A month. Yes, but fuck. Yeah. You ain't gonna get no clear yeah. pictures in here. I don't know how them cameras picking up. It's, a little, it's the hot box, bro. Okay. You know? Keep it smoky in here. <laughs> Well, thank you again, man. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. So what are you doing next? Uh, still the still snowfall is on, Hip Hop Square is on, it's still touring, man. Uh, What's your goal, nigga? What you want to claim to? Want to win one of those fucking awards? Yeah, or, man. Or, I'm thinking about, yeah. Ass award, Oscar? Fucking Oscar, Grammy, shit. I Hell think I'm going to play him in the movie that you, like, yes. Jamie play you, and I'm going to play him. I can pull out, look. That's going to be a neat trick. How was that? That's See, that's good. Hey, I'm close. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love that. Gotta get shit. my muscles up. Hey, give me well, a couple apple boxes. I'm growing my hair out long <laughs> enough so I can get Great. cornrows. Easy. You know what I'm saying? Then that'll be culture inappropriation, appropriate appropriation. <laughs> yes. I don't know what the fuck it'll you be, but I'm just saying right. shit and making up make shit. It right. shit. Anyway. Yeah, that was my goals, man. Let's get that's it. That's dope. Let's fucking go, get baby. It. My goal is to make funny. D. Ray Davis as Eben Britton. Mike Tyson. Yes. All right. In the house, Tyson Ranch. Tyson, yeah, Tyson Ranch, Ranch baby. as well, yes. And he's, nice and he's also making Tyson Ranch sauce coming soon. I really don't think that's so, but... Yeah. Tyson Ranch <laughs> sauce is coming. It's ranch. Have you tasted the Tyson Ranch sauce? No, it's like sauce. great pompon. Right? Some mustard. And they, all the niggas throw each other in the car? No. Excuse me, do you have any Tyson Ranch sauce? No way. Fucking <laughs> great poupon. hot sauces are great poupon. Black people great poupon. Tabasco? Yeah, Tabasco sauce are great poupon. It's one of my favorites. Louisiana. Louisiana tobacco. All right, everybody. Well, we're out of here. Well, I'm going to do Tyson Ranch sauce. Just going to see. It's going to be a picture kind of like yours on there. Subscribe <laughs> yeah, to the YouTube it. channel. <laughs> it, 
Hotboxing yes. with Mike Tyson. Check out our website, yes. hotboxingpodcast.com. Yeah, yeah. And you think <laughs> it's going to be bad. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Testify. Ah! Testify, Tyson. Until next time, I'm Evan Britton. We're out. One. <laughs>